one. Welcome, everybody, to episode 210 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Will. I'm Corey. Today's episode is going to be, I don't know, do you want to call these, like, first impressions? I think this that's fair. Of? Okay, um, we're going to be talking about Trove, but uh, we only each played f- three, maybe four hours of it. Nah, not um, even. Not even. Uh, with these types of games, it's hard because there's so much. Like, it's an it's an MMORPG, essentially, uh, and there's a, there's there's a lot to cover. So we didn't want to like be like, yeah, we're professionals at this game. We played hun- put hundreds of hours into it. Now we're going to review it. So I kind of want to call these like, especially for MMORPGs episodes, like first impressions or Trove first impressions. You know, just to just so we can give our thoughts so far without having to put hundreds of hours and and talk expertly about Trove, right? Yeah, we and uh, just going off of that, we've done very few episodes where we could sit there and say that we have all completely experienced. A video game yeah. you know yeah definitely As, especially an mmorpg i mean the only one i can talk about is guild wars 2 which i have yeah and i think we even waited when we did the episode for that we waited a couple weeks after it came out before we covered it Indeed. Uh, just because i to play as much as i possibly could before we did the review but i think if, if first impressions is is a good thing to call the, these types of episodes so yeah we're going to be covering the free-to-play uh mmorpg trove minecraft-esque it is so that's going to be the main segment uh oh eric's not here today had to call in call in ill he's taking care of his fiance so uh hopefully he'll be back next week uh teasers anybody have anything you want to tease for later on in the episode will mm-hmm. no nothing <laughs> a whole lot <laughs> boy did you play anything Corey? i actually did i played more etrian mystery dungeon uh obviously more rocket league i assume you guys Played a little more yeah. running here and there. Yeah. Nope. Whoa. No. All right. Dan's done with it. I'm not done with it. No. I I was occupied with other things. Uh, more Hearthstone. I don't think I'm going to talk about that at all. Nothing major. Oh, did anybody? The expansion. Pre-ordered. Did we talk about that last week? Yeah. Yeah, a little we bit. did. We did. Okay. I was thinking that I forgot to include that in my notes to talk about today, but. Um, yeah, there's that. And I actually, the new thing that I played, thanks to Eric, who purchased it on Steam, and through Steam Family Sharing, I got to play the Talos Principle. Yeah, I've been wanting to play that. But my experience with it was very brief, and uh-huh. I'll explain why when we get gotcha. to it later on. Gotcha. Uh, I, like I teased last week, I played the Bureau XCOM Declassified, so that's what I've been playing this week. So I'll talk about that when the time comes. I can't wait. <laughs> Another short conversation? No, okay. no, I'll cover it. Right. I'll cover it. Um, yeah. Should we get right into the main segment? Let's, sure. let's yeah. talk about Trove. Let's talk about Trove. So, yeah, tro- like I said, Trove is a, a free-to-play Minecraft-esque game. Uh, there's the crafting similar to, to Minecraft, but it's more like combat and MMORPG focused than that. Uh, it's got a, it's got kind of a looting system, a little bit like Borderlands or like a Diablo. It's got the color coded gear you can loot. Um, Corey, why don't you, why don't you start with your your experiences with Trove thus far? Well, unfortunately, we, I picked a bad day, and I think Eric did too to play Trove. Mm-hmm. We decided to do late, or it was probably Monday this, or was it Tuesday this week? Doesn't matter. We decided we we're going to do an episode on Trove, so Eric and I went to play it on Tuesday because we both had a lot of time to play that day. And it just so happens that it was patch day, which is fine. That happens with every MMORPG. Uh, Mm -hmm. We just picked a a crappy day. But for whatever reason, the patch broke some things in the game. So it turns out that the game was down pretty much the entire day. I kept checking Mm -hmm. periodically. It came up a couple times, but immediately went back down. And uh, as of like 8 p.m. It's still 8 p.m. Eastern. It still wasn't up. And at that point, I had just given up on it. Fortunately, though, I was able to play a good four or five hours on Wednesday and got into it a little bit more. And at first, uh, I was not all that impressed with the game. It felt very generic. I, I couldn't yeah. understand what they were doing. It's like you said, it's Minecraft. It's voxel based. Yeah. And I just off rage nowadays. Yep, absolutely. But I didn't see any reason why that was part of the game. I didn't see like, at what point is that? Are you actually building things like you are in Minecraft? And, and none of that becomes immediately apparent in, in four to five hours of gameplay. But what they do give you is uh, what's called your cornerstone, mm-hmm. which gives you a little taste of it. Uh, I don't want to go too in-depth, too in Dan. 
I don't know. How far do you want me to talk about this? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, so they give you their, your cornerstone, and that's your little plot of land that you can move throughout the whole game world and throughout different zones and stuff like that. And then yeah, you can there, you can build there's up. There's little, little, little spots in the maps where you can, like, it's... It, like a save point, kind of, or, or or a rest station where you can kind of summon your your cornerstone, and that's your that's your house with all your crafting stations and all that fun stuff. Which is as simple or as elaborate as you want it to be. Yeah. Um. And you, like you said, it's 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 sort of like a pop up tent. Like you go to an adventure zone and you can pop up in these designated spots your your little cornerstone. Uh, what's cool about that though, and again, this is something you wouldn't know without playing hours and hours of, of this game and sort of what I think is the coolest part of this game is the stuff that people are building for their cornerstones um, I saw one where somebody constructed a tower, a really tall tower, and it teleported them to the top of the tower and then flung them across the adventure zone uh, so traversal is one of those things in this game that can kind of be a pain, but this person through their cornerstone was able to build a structure all on their own all custom built through the voxels that would actually launch them across the adventure zone. Wow. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool, and I'm like, okay, now the game makes sense a little bit. Yeah. That you can do that kind of stuff. And there, it does seem like there are those kind of game-breaking things uh, having to do with the voxels, because I, I there were dungeons that I went into, and I was able to like dig myself into a certain way or trap the enemy in a certain way by building things uh, that I could sort of exploit the game. I don't think it's fair to call it an exploit because I feel like they want you to do that a little bit, like experiment and be creative. Yep. Um, and that's another thing I, I I really enjoyed about the game. But that was just surface. What class did you make? I made a gunslinger. Okay. Yeah, there's, what, 10 different classes maybe? And then ones you can purchase in the... It's it's free to play with microtransactions. The the microtransactions seem to be like skins for things, different mounts, uh, d different classes. Like I think you get to pick one off the bat and then you pay for more that's what yeah it you, you pick one uh one of a lot i think and then you can switch like 10 i think you can switch between a couple different ones once you have your character and then yeah. there's obviously other ones you can buy yeah but that's another thing i think is really cool about this game is they have what's called your mastery rank which as i understand it is persistent across all your whatever you do so you can on the fly, almost on the fly, you have to go to like a, a little terminal thing to switch your class. You can do that and, and just switch between the classes as much as you want, but what you have is your mastery rank, and that's persistent across all the classes. Mm -hmm. So when you level up uh, your the class that you are currently, it puts points you, towards your mastery rank. Your mastery. There's lots of different things that level up your mastery rank, and there's different tiers for that, and when you hit a tier, you'll give yourself some sort of boon that will again, be persistent across all your characters, which I think is really cool. Did you notice that stuff? No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't get onto that. I made it to, like, level, like, eight, I think, was was, was my character when I, uh, I guess, gave up for the for the episode. Yep. I played a little bit before I wanted to, I wanted to peruse the, the online shop before we, because I had heard some people complaining about it being pay to win, but I didn't get that impression from it. Um, I think that's just people complaining. To complain yeah i didn't i didn't mess around with that too much and it is that stuff is kind of in your face which is unfortunate is they're constantly like hey you know here get this this and this but i think like you said like you can certainly enjoy this game for hours it seems anyway yeah. without having to pay to do so yeah what about you dan what did you, i made what did a you... i made a pirate captain um that was the obvious choice for me i'm a big fan of pirates and i had the same experience with you uh starting off the bat i'm like this seems kind of uh simplistic and not that interesting but uh as you as you play it and you kind of go into the game world and see how expansive it is and see all the different things you can do it does get a lot more interesting i started to get interested in it like i i all of a sudden found myself just you know, getting lost in the world and just popping from dungeon to dungeon um, and clearing dungeons out. And I'm like, man, I'm actually having a blast doing this. Uh, and the combat is really action-y, which I like. Um, a lot a lot of dodging, a lot of jumping. And uh, with, my, with my character, I have, uh, like, turrets that I can place. So it was positioning people so that they would kind of be clustered together so that my turrets would hit them and do the splash damage uh, to them. And I thought that was, that was really fun. Um, and the I think the simplistic graphics kind of 
are 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 good for this game you know i think i think that helps it run it ran very smoothly for me um i don't know about you Corey and and will will has the same graphics card as me so it probably ran about the same for yeah him. it ran smoothly so that was that was kind of nice yeah i had no hiccups and and like you're saying about the combat and stuff it's, uh, like you said, very action-y, and my guy was a gunslinger, so obviously I'm wielding guns. And that sort of surprised me when I was playing it. I was like, oh, this doesn't feel like an MMO RPG at all. Yeah. Because uh, another thing that's big is the amount of double jumps you can do. I mean, I say double jumps, but it can be triple jumps, quadruple jumps, depending on your skills. And I got to the point where the equipment that I had gave my guy six jumps. So okay. I would, uh, what I would do is I would jump a lot and stay up in the air and time those jumps so I was up in the air for longer while I was just shooting down at the enemies below me. Uh, but you, there is a little bit of uh, twitch skill involved because, like I said, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a regular MMORPG where you're just watching the auto attack and yeah. timing your cooldowns. You're actually, like, moving and, and, you know, situating the cursor over the bad guys. So while I was, like, jumping up in the air, I was clicking to shoot, and uh, I have another ability. The Gunslinger has another ability where it's like a rocket boost almost. So I'd mix that in with all my double jumps and just spend a lot of time up in the air where the enemies couldn't hit me while I was shooting them. Yeah. And that was really fun. Yeah. I didn't realize you could double jump until like fairly recently towards the end of my playing. <laughs> uh, and, and I, I could jump like 10 or 12 times, I think from, for, so I can get wow. really high. Yeah. Wow. Just, just by, you know, jumping it's, it's neat, you know, it, it makes tra- traversal a lot easier. Mm hmm. Then you know you have you have a mount in the game that you press push Z to get on, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, if, if I can just jump and move that way, it's it's a lot better that way. So. And in another thing that's cool, there's the jump skill, and then there's the laser mancy skill. Did you notice that? I saw laser mancy on there. I wasn't exactly sure what it was. I mean, I what I assume is it's your uh, your multi tool, your thing that destroys oh, the the blocks, yeah. and depending yeah. on the 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 rank of your laser tool, the more you can, or the quicker you can get through certain blocks, mm-hmm. which I started to talk about earlier. Another thing I really like about the game are the adventure zones and the different biomes in them. Yeah. And as far as I understand, they're randomly generated. I can see that. Like the world gets randomly generated and then, you know, it populates it, it with people. Yeah. Um, and then there's all these dungeons throughout the zone, the zone. And I, I mean, I'm sure it's not, entirely random because it would just be chaos but there's some sort of algorithm built into that that gives you something a dungeon that you can play through but there was a yeah. few that uh i went into one of the elite dungeons which i think is meant for groups um but i went in on my own and i just saw all these people wandering around and nobody could find the final boss and i went into this area that was like it looks like there should be a final boss here but there isn't it was just like a platform uh, surrounded by lava and in the middle of the platform there was a darker brick and everybody was just like kind of running around like where's where's this boss it should be here so i just drilled through the middle of that platform and fell down to another level that was all lava and a few blocks here and there and in within there was like the pirate captain oh, oh that's wow. neat it was really cool and then everybody like fell in and we all attacked it and killed it and everybody got credit um, oh cool and- that's another thing. The game's really forgiving about like who does the killing and who gets the rewards. It's yeah. It's very forward in terms of giving out rewards to yeah. even if even if you just showed up. Another uh, feature in the game is when you trans or when you teleport to an adventure zone, you can go up to one of the um, terminals and use the action button on it, and it will teleport you to a random character in the zone. So a couple times I did that, and it teleported me to guys who were fighting bosses in dungeons, and I'd get, like, two hits on them, and it'd die, and we'd all get rewards. Nice. It was really cool. Yeah. What and about you? What was your... Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, nope, nope. What was your experience, Will? What, um, what, what, what class did you make? What did I'm, you think of at the beginning? I made an Ice Sage, and I didn't play as much as you guys. I played around half an hour. Mm-hmm. Um and so we, everything you guys were saying about how it seemed pretty basic on the outside, like that's not the feeling I got. I basically went in and started killing things and like built my house or the cornerstone. And that's really all I did. And it seemed very basic and simple. And I wasn't that intrigued. So I'm kind of glad to hear that it yeah. gets better. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. Um, and I did notice that the combat is very action-y. And I did really like that because my two abilities is throwing an ice shard and then uh-huh. dropping a big one on the enemies and stuff like that, which do a lot of damage. So, like, I was just messing around with combos with stuff like that and having a lot of fun. I did really like my class a lot so far. Mm-hmm. So, as I said, I didn't play as much as you guys, though. So. Yeah. 
I'm glad to hear it does get better. Yeah. Go ahead, Corey. I was just going to talk a little bit about the, the biomes, mm-hmm. which I think are really cool. One of the reasons yeah. I really liked Terraria was the difference in biomes and the creatures and things that inhabited it. But this is uh, this is just as... I use the word, and I know you're not supposed to use this word anymore, but I think it's the best word to describe these games is gay. It's very, like, aloof and, you know, like, oh, fun. Silly, happy, silly, yeah. yeah. Uh, and <laughs> my favorite biome that I came across in Trove was the candy, kind of candy kingdom biome. I didn't I didn't hit that one. It it was really cool because like I'd go to a dungeon and it'd be like slay the cupcake cupcake king and there'd be like gingerbread man I had gingerbread men I had to kill along the way uh and like gummy worms that once you killed it it would split off into two and then you had to kill the other two. Uh huh. there was also like instead of water it was chocolate so you're like swimming in chocolate. Mm-hmm. That know. is and like the the scenery was like gumdrops and like candy canes and stuff like that. It was really cool. Uh, another one I really liked was like an undead Wild West. Yeah. That was fun. The pirate one I mentioned was a lot of fun, like going from ship to ship and climbing yep. up the masts. And I did, I of course did, did that. Uh, it, it was fitting for my character being the pirate captain that I explored the, the boats and I went in a lighthouse uh-huh. that had, uh, had a cool boss at the top of it. And uh, the, did you come across the snow one? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I spent a little time in a, in a snow biome. That was that was kind of neat too. Oh yeah, snow. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. Did you do any of the club stuff? No, I couldn't figure out what that was exactly. So Trove's like guild equivalent is called clubs, mm-hmm. and the game sort of pushes you into doing that because when you start, you're going through like a series of quests that are they're just trying to get you acquainted with the game, and as you do these things, it rewards you with the glim points or i don't know what the currency is uh, but one of them is join a club and i couldn't get anybody to invite me so i just kept like spamming not really spamming but asking in chat every now and again hey i just need to beat this quest can somebody invite me to a club uh so somebody did and and they just just quickly booted me out but i got the quest reward but it turns out in the hub zone the hub world uh you can just go to people's clubs and what a club is is it's a player run it's like minecraft it's like a player run yeah area and uh people build some awesome things in these clubs and if you're part of the club you can obviously contribute in different ways it has guild stuff like a guild chest and all that stuff but it's just like building a lot of things and i i mean i don't know to what extent uh to how many other things you can do with the club but the couple that i walked through like i just saw all this crazy stuff and i'm like there's way more going on in this game than i'll experience in you know these four or five hours yeah Um, so I, f- I feel like we can't really do the game justice because there is so much more going on. Which is why we're calling this a first impressions episode. <laughs> right, right. But I just thought like... like thought that was a safe label. Yeah, those club zones were so cool and the stuff that they built, it was so like beautiful. And I'm like, this is, you know, this is what people love about Minecraft. And this game yeah. has taken that, embraced it, and tacked on a really fun MMORPG yep. to boot. Yeah. It was impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I don't have any more thoughts, Corey, if you're if you're if you're good. Not really. I mean I did some fishing. Oh, did you? Yeah, had to buy a I... fishing pole and a lure. That was pretty fun. Well I mean if you can fish in a game, you have to fish in a game. That's just that's just an MMORPG staple. And actually I was reading somebody uh posted I was reading some of the message boards and somebody posted that fishing is one of the best ways to raise your mastery rank. Really? Ooh. Yeah. It's like putting your equipment through the loot collector is a good way to do it too because it's, I don't know, it's like collection has something to do with building collections of items and once you get yeah, a certain it, type it of unlocks, item. It unlocks skins too. So as you do that, you can have skins for your weapons and armor and items and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's a ton going on in this game. Yeah. Uh, if you're into the voxel kind of thing uh, with a, adventures as a big part of that, I think... Yeah. It's a really enjoyable game. And check out, if you're interested, check out the uh, the video I put up on YouTube. It's me. It's about 45 minutes of me playing Tro for the very first time, and it gives you a very, very brief initial impression of the game. Yeah. Uh, it's free to play, too, on Steam. So if you're at all interested, seriously, give it a shot. It's, it's not going to cost you anything but, but a little bit of time, you know. Are you going to keep and- playing? 
I, yeah, definitely. It, I, it's not something I'm going to like sink hundreds of hours into, but uh, you know, if you have a little bit of time here and there, just to jump in and 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 play it, definitely. Because it was it was it was kind of relaxing for me. Like I I sat back and the the other games I played were kind of stressful. Uh, you know, I played some Mario Kart Online, which is always stressful. Splatoon Online, which is stressful, and then XCOM, which can be stressful. Uh, so it was nice to kick back and relax and and play some Trove and and enjoy it. You know, absolutely. And I, I keep saying how I'll play these MMORPGs and just like and immediately get sick of them because it feels like things I've done a million times over. But yeah. this one like actually kind of feels a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. And I know with EQ Next, they wanted to do like more customizable building and stuff like that. But I don't know how you get more customizable than taking voxels and building whatever you want out of them. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. So yeah, I think I think Trove is an easy recommend for me, uh, with it being free and and really pretty fun, surprisingly fun, I thought, you know. Yeah. Uh, shall we get right into Nibble Bits? Sure. Yeah, sure, Dan. All right. Uh, I also have Eric's Nibble Bits, so I will I will do those too. Um, he he sent them to me, so I would. Will, why don't you get us started? Sure, Dan. One sec, let me grab them. <clears throat> So my first nibble bit is that Blizzard is announcing another World of Warcraft expansion at Gamescom. They're keeping the details a secret, but they said that there is going to be an expansion announced. <laughs> so the ga- that game keeps on living on. Yes, I know you guys does. gave me crap for buying <laughs> it and playing it, but it's not as bad as you guys say. No, I never said it. Well, I never liked it, but I don't know. It's just, it's, you know, it's been done yeah. before. Yeah, um, it's bad. <laughs> What makes you say that, Corey? I mean, if 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 I had gotten into it right when it came out, probably not, be amazing. because every other MMORPG just about that's come out since is pretty much a WoW clone, more or yeah. less. Even though WoW was kind of an EQ clone, uh, I just Surprised. have no interest. <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell that to people who no love WoW. people get very angry if you say e- it, WoW was influenced by EverQuest. I remember playing EverQuest and seeing those arguments going well, on. Well, that's why we didn't play World of Warcraft is because we were EverQuest, EverQuest two players. Yeah, which they came out around the same time, I think. Ever yeah, EQ2 it was very was close online. together. Very close together. You guys were Team EverQuest. Oh yeah, I guess I was too because I played it. Yeah, just for fun. EverQuest two was awesome. Kind of missed that game. It's free to play. It's really bad though. The free to play. I remember I is couldn't it? access things in my inventory. Uh. Yeah. It was pretty restrictive. Okay. Yeah, I don't and recall. Like, you can't use the chat channels. Yep. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and the, you, you couldn't even use shout. You could just use, like, say. Hmm. You couldn't join I, a group. You had to be invited to a group, I think, if I remember correctly. I hope it's gotten better because it was really bad when I played it. I wonder if it was different for me. I wonder if it was different for me because I had subscribed for so many months. I just remember. I I think I played it up to like level twenty, solo. It was just right. like, eh. this isn't worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point too, it I'm sure it feels old. Yeah. I need to act more actiony combat in an MMORPG after getting used to Guild Wars and uh, even uh, WildStar was very actiony. So WildStar was underrated. I I'm gonna play that as soon as it goes free to play. The end of the you year. can play mine. I, just gotta play the subscription. Uh, well, no, I and have it. It's going free uh, to play. Yeah, it's, I'm just waiting for it to go free to play. Uh, so, pay the monthly fee. Anyway, my other nibble bit is that Nintendo's 2016 financial reports under confirmed releases, The Legend of Zelda Wii U was not under there. Uh, so it's causing a lot of people to speculate, is it even going to come out on the Wii U or it's going to be a uh, launch title for the NX? I, if I had to guess, I would say it's probably going to come out for both. Although that, if it only comes out for the NX, that would coax people into buying the new system if they already had a Wii U. You know, a yeah. Legend of Zelda game, it's an open world Legend of Zelda game coming out for the new system. That makes me wonder because every, all the reports that we've heard already with the rumors is that it's coming out as soon as the end of next year, right? Wasn't that what we heard? The NX. Uh, I heard as early as July next year. It was supposed to start manufacturing in October. Well, the NX is just a mod that you attach to your 3DS <laughs> to let you play Wii U games on the go. That would be neat. I mean, we still have no idea. This is, this is exactly what it is. You think? I don't know. 
I don't know. We, we actually got a piece of feedback about that. You want me to read it? Yeah. If I can find it real quick. Let's hear it. But, uh, yeah, they they were uh, going over all the other examples of games that were coming out, and The Legend of Zelda was not on there. It's crazy. Uh, from... Will, my second theory. Mm-hmm. From Eric Eric Millington on Twitter says, Save it for NX. I say that as a Wii U lover. So, Yeah? Yeah, that's fair. My second theory, surprise, holiday 2015 release. That oh would my be God, that, that would be brutal. crazy. That's not yeah, happening, but they're already manufacturing it now. Yeah, it's ready. And they leak they leak the reports uh to throw people off. Yeah. That would be something really hard to keep a secret. That yeah, would cause not, that's not happening. That, that would cause fights in Walmart. I like, mean right right at Christmas time. For the people who say like the Wii U never got a Zelda, you can make the argument that Hyrule Warriors was it. I know that wouldn't hey. be a popular opinion. Right. Right. No, you're right. You're right about that. Even though that game's awesome. I did really like Hyrule Warriors. But I should I should play that again. I should too. I need to I need to beat it. I got like seventy something hours into it or something like that. Now you know why I love Dynasty Warrior games. Yeah, oh yeah, I get it. I always like those games though. Eric always picks on me. Go ahead. But that's all for okay. my nibble bits, Dan. What do you got, Corey? I got a number. And speaking of Nintendo, Nintendo is launching a nice update. For Super Smash Bros. on the 3DS and Wii U, coming to Japan first and then North America, it will include a tournament mode for the Wii U only. That won't be that won't be on the 3DS. New Mii costumes, new stages, a feature that allows you to upload replays to YouTube. All right. And uh, King K Rule and Chrome Me costumes, which will cost extra. Turns out the stages are actually quote unquote paid DLC. In their 250 yen each, which is about two dollars in our, mm, our currency. Uh, Peach's Castle 64 and Hyrule Castle 64. That's good. Yes. So yeah, that's coming out in Japan the 31st, I think, tomorrow. That would be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In North America, sometime in August. You have any interest in the tournament mode, Will, for Smash Bros? <sighs> yeah, I would probably play it. Yeah. Just because I play everything in that game, really. Yeah. I was reading a little bit about it, though, and apparently the way it works is that you win points over a set period of time, and whoever has the most points is the tournament winner. Makes sense. Okay. I I would kind of prefer, like, a round-robin kind of thing or something with brackets. It's probably hard to coordinate that, though, uh, online with people playing at different times and whatnot. Because Mario Kart does the same thing with, with the points that you win over time. I, I mean, when I back in the brawl days, I back on the Smashboard uh, forums, everybody would coordinate the times that they could play. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't even. It would just have to be like, okay, you know, us three, and we'll throw Eric in there. We're starting a tournament, and then it'll say, oh, the next match that needs to be played is Dan and Will, and then whenever you guys played it, you played it, and then yeah. it'd say when the next match, you know, whoever was the next match, and then whenever you played it, you played it. I'd like something like that. Yeah. It wouldn't have to be all in real time, you know? Right. The game doesn't even need to do that because we did that with Brawl. Well, yeah, but I mean, just to, a way to do it online with, like, random yeah. people. You know, you enter this this tournament with other people and have at it. Yeah. That way. But anyway. That game keeps on getting better and better, by the way. I gotta get back into Smash. I traded in. I haven't even turned it on in three or four months. I don't know how. I haven't played Smash either, other than when you guys were here. But that hurts. Yeah, the last time I played it was because like I don't like it with you guys. What was that episode two hundred? Yeah, per, episode yeah. two hundred, and then a little bit on ten weeks uh, ago, guys' weekend. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Moving along, Techland announced Dying Light will get a fully fledged expansion called Dying Light: The Following, whole new map. Apparently, it's the same size as all the previous maps combined. Which is pretty big. Wow. That is big, and I assume it will be populated with a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. But the coolest thing to me was dune buggies that you can shoot of, shoot out of while driving. I like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. I hope. That, be, I, I assume this new map will give you more like open places oh, to drive. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like... 
uh, from the screenshots of I saw of it, it looked like there was like a, a field of some sort. And then, you know, the regular parkour stuff too. Oh built. yeah. See, I've only been playing like an hour here and there here and there of this game and it's amazing. Yeah, it is really good. I should boot that one up again. I got I, I wanna I wanna maybe I'll wait for the expansion. Uh, speaking of it's available available for purchase, but if you got the seasons pass, you'll get it for free. Good job, Oops. Techland. Nice. They said that we'll have more info at Gamescom, which is next week. Next week, yeah. Next week. Wow. Wow. We'll have to do our Gamescom recap. Yeah, you'll have so, to do our Gamescom re- re- recap, Dan. <laughs> Phil Spencer <laughs> revealed in an interview with The Verge that Microsoft is working on streaming PC games to the Xbox One. Now, this is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted to. Uh, yeah. So he said it's it's it. It seems like it should be easy, but it's it's really easy to do it the other way. The Xbox One games to PC because, and Phil Spencer said this, they know exactly what's coming in. You know, they yeah. know the the streaming machine, they know the specs, they know exactly the hardware and everything in it. So it's really easy to do it that way. It's much harder to do it the other way because everybody has all different kinds of PCs. Not just that, but running it different. Like a lot of people now have like 1440p monitors, right? Instead of 1080p monitor, the, there's that, and yeah. and the the inputs are different, yep. obviously. Yep, yep. The so. the encoding the video and stuff is much more difficult going the other way. Yeah. No timeline for this to happen, but uh, as I said, this is this is the stuff I wanted to see, and I I have felt like the PC stuff is a big differentiator for Microsoft. And until up until this point, I don't think they've really until Phil Spencer took over, they haven't really took advantage of that at all. No, they've been completely separate ecosystems, which never made sense to me. No, it's silly. Uh, but I mean, Phil Spencer actually has a brain on his shoulders. Yeah. Wait, what are you saying about Don Matrick? <laughs> well, a lot of those people were Don. They were suits. Yeah. You know, I feel like Phil Spencer's actually like plays video games a lot and uh understands. and loves video games and understands what what gamers want from their systems, you know. Yeah, he's more of an Iwata. Yeah, definitely. You know. Uh, yeah, he uh I don't know what he what he did before working. I don't know if he was a game developer too. He I think he headed uh like Microsoft Game Studio or something back in the day. Yeah, he, he was he came through the system for sure. Yeah. But he's done a good job. Uh, I, if I was to buy a system now, it would be an Xbox One over PS4. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. I just hope they follow through. You know, it's one thing to say all this stuff, but I hope they actually do it. You know, I want like I want Xbox Live like on my computer, and I can see what, is- what, what everyone. I know it, you can do it now, and I know yeah. they they had it to a certain extent before, but well, like, the Xbox the Xbox app on PC does exactly that. Yeah, yeah. I want to like it's on, it's on Windows 10 now. I yeah. should say. But I've always but, wanted to just have it like running and, and just like it is on, on Xbox, see what my friends are playing and send them messages and, and do all those things. And that yeah. should have been so easy before. Right. I don't know. But yeah, it sounds like we're getting more of that stuff. So I'm happy. Yeah. Razer has acquired Ouya. All right. Good purchase. Not sure what they saw there. They already had what Oya was offering. I mean, it's an Android co- game console. Who doesn't? You know, everyone. Yeah. Android's open. You know, you can just use it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe they just wanted certain people there. I, I don't know. But uh, the new, the big news story was that Ouya came out and said that they were not going to fulfill the money they promised to developers uh, for part of their free the games initiative i don't know if you guys remember this but we yeah. set aside a million dollars of their money they raised to help developers develop games so long as they promise to make them Ouya timed exclusives for a little right. while but because we was not very successful and <sighs> once razor acquired them they're like oh we're not going to make good on these promises but razor came out and said that they will pay out People, yeah. what the developers deserve which is good and yeah sorry good razor on. that you acquired that <laughs> yeah I, like i said i can't really see i don't know what their what their plan is for it like you said may, maybe it's more a uh, handful of people that they want 
that they didn't necessarily want to poach from Oya, but they already have the the shield, which is a, essentially a more much more powerful Oya. Yeah, you know. I want to go back to the episodes where we argued about the Oya. I do too. I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, I'd <laughs> love to just pull up that discussion. <laughs> I've I've said it before and I'll say it again. I still like the idea of an Android based games console. But I just you know, the Oya was kind of the first one to to do that, but obviously it's been done a lot better since. Um if I was to buy one, it would be the, the NVIDIA one. It, if I, I remember it can be done great, but I, I, I still don't want it. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, the news broke on air too. I think so. I could just remember you guys talking about like how you were allocating your funds so you could get the OU when it came out, and I'm just like, <laughs> what? Who wants that? Dan and Eric did. Well, we get, <laughs> you know, you know how we are. We get caught up in the hype. I guess. I pre-ordered, I pre-ordered a Fallout 4 uh, Pit Boy edition that I won't be able to afford, and we'll probably have to cancel. So yeah. it happens. You should make your own Pit Boy. Well. You, I mean, I, the app will work regardless of whether you have the Pip-Boy edition or not. So a lot of people said they were just going to buy a cheap, like, $5 uh, cell phone wristband off of Amazon and use that. There you go. So Pretty much the same idea. Yeah. 3D printed Pip-Boy. There you go. There's got to be that, right? Somebody's got to have oh, that I'm recipe. Sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Do they call them recipes for a 3D printed thing? Blueprints? Blueprint, yeah. That's the word. Recipes. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing too many video games. Oh my god. Uh, speaking of, oh, you know what I was wondering? I wonder if the Towerfall people got their money. Because that, that was arguably the only good thing to come out of the Ouya, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, I think everyone pretty pretty much agrees that that was the. I mean, it's it's gone multi-platform. I don't know if they care anymore. They probably sold plenty of copies on PS4 and and Steam. Yeah, that game's awesome. It is awesome. I agree. I still haven't played it. How dare it's you? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's pretty great. Speaking of games, I haven't played Final Fantasy Type Zero HD is coming out for PC August eighteenth. I'm in. I'm in too. I've been wanting this one for a while. Oh, are you gonna buy it? Oh yeah. Oh okay. So I don't have to. No, you don't have to. You can. Uh, you can play my copy. All right. I don't like this relationship. <laughs> yeah, this is very. Uh, Take. Side. There's take. no give and take. Just take. Well, wait. I thought you were getting the Phantom Pain. That's true. Yeah. That I'm gonna play. Yeah. Because that's am. not one I would buy anyway. So. Actually, I'm getting it for like thirty bucks. The Phantom Pain. Yeah, for PC, and I'm not gonna play it because I don't really like Metal Gear that much. On Steam. Yep. Oh, all right. Well, we can play that one, Dan. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll, we'll figure that out. I'll buy something before the year's out. Well, I always say, you know, if if it's a game I want to buy, I'm just I'm gonna buy it. Right. Um, Phantom Pain is not a game I would buy for myself, but if you know one of you guys has it on Steam, I'll play it. Kind of thing, you know. I don't know if you noticed, Dan, but I was playing Rocket League earlier today, and you logged into Trove, uh huh, and it kicked me out. Oh, did it? Yeah, mid match. Oh boy, sorry about that. What were you doing? It was like eight o'clock. Oh, I was checking the. That's when I was checking the the microtransaction store on Trove. Uh, I I I saw that you were playing Rocket League, but it didn't it didn't add up in my head that you're playing my copy of Rocket League. No, it's fine. Like I said, it's it's your game. Don't even worry about. How long was it? I didn't even notice when you had logged in. Usually, it pops up in the bottom. Yeah. That you you've logged in, and I have five minutes left. Because we still have to try to play a match against each other. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Test that out. Yeah. Uh, the first Nintendo NX games were announced: Dragon Quest X and Dragon Quest XI. All mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So X is already out on 3DS, <coughs> Wii U, and PC, and XI is coming to the PS4 and 3DS. This is why I still think this new console is like just like a portable something that lets you play everything. Yeah. Because if they're the first two games they're announcing are games that are already coming out for other platforms and like current platform i don't know it just seems weird right yeah yeah it does, and that, that was very weird to me it does, definitely it seems weird yeah who knows so weird 
Weird Nintendo being weird. <laughs> <laughs> My last bit of news, The Witcher 3 is getting a new game plus mode. Huh? That's the last piece of the free DLC. Yes. Stronger Enemies gives you the option to reselect your difficulty level. If you're not level 30 by the time you start new game plus mode, it will bump you up to that point. If you're above that level, you'll maintain that level. Uh, you will keep all your items except for quest items, books and letters, usable items and trophies, and Gwent cards. You'll lose your Gwent cards. Uh, you'll also get a potion that will allow you to reallocate your skill points. And as you mentioned, Dan, it is the final piece of free DLC for The Witcher 3. Uh-huh. So that's good. Yeah. Gives, I'd like to play that. Gives people a reason to play through it again. It was funny, think, though, the article I, I cited on our Twitter, uh, like the first sentence was, even though most people have yet to finish their first playthrough. Yeah, there was a poll on Destructoid or Kotaku, maybe, about how many people had, had finished. And it was only like 20% of Oof. people that finished it. Oof. Um, well, I mean, it's it's a long game. You're looking at, if you do anything other than the main quest, you're looking at at least 50 hours probably yeah so i'm waiting for cd project red to finish the game before i finish the game <laughs> how dare you <laughs> you hate that game i gotta get my witcher 3 jabs in here and there i find your lack of faith disturbing i know i'm sorry don't let it happen again uh, are you done good guy cd project red releasing <laughs> unfinished game cory <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, mindable bits. Those worried about getting to play Rise of the Tomb Raider on systems other than the Xbox 360 and Xbox Xbox One can rest easy as Crystal Dynamics announced late, late last week that the newest Tomb Raider game would be available for PC sometime in early 2016 and during the holiday 2016 window for PS4. So that's nice. That's a game I was very angry that Xbox One got exclusivity too but i mean we knew it was timed exclusivity we didn't know how for long for how long so this clarifies that for mm -hmm. us i've been wanting to play tomb raider again i'm trying to decide if i want that to be my next game that i play Corey, thoughts who knows on tomb raider i have zero interest in tomb raider i i know it's a good game it's just not my style of game i hear you that's fine how dare you <laughs> moving on in Splatoon news, there's a huge new update coming August 5th, which will bring two new weapons, the Splat Bucket and a Gatling Gun Heavy Weapon, over 40 new clothing items for more inkling customization, two new game modes, the first being Squad Battle, uh, which you can form your own squad with your friends and play multiplayer, and then there's Private Battle, where the host makes the rules, including map, weapons, mode, and team makeup. Uh, and the last will raise the level cap from 20 to 50 and rank mode level to S+. Wow. So that's exciting for me. I've played over 40 hours of Splatoon, and I'm excited because I hit the level cap, so I'm excited that the level cap is going up. Weapons will be nice, too. Whenever uh, whenever the rank mode is the tower defense one, the rollers aren't that useful for that, so I'm hoping I can uh, get, like, the splat bucket and use that for my tower defense weapon. But This game's starting to fill out pretty nicely. Yes, it is. Uh, the, my wife just just started playing it recently. She loves it. Got to play one it. of those one more match type of games, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. I gotta play it. You should. It's been on the back burner. Yeah, especially we'll be able to form our own squad now. So that's true. Corey, you gotta get it now. Yeah, I'm trading in my Wii U. He's got to get Oculus ready. I gotta buy dress shoes. <laughs> <laughs> And then my last nibble bit, Retro City Rampage is now available for DOS with a port to Windows 3.1 coming soon. Physical copies of the DOS version are being manufactured now on 3.5-inch floppy disks. Isn't that cool? Wow. Uh, if you already own the game on Steam, GOG, or Humble Store, you can download the DOS or Linux versions as well as the 3.1 Windows 3.1 test version. And this is a quote uh, from the developer about his thought process in making it available for DOS and Windows 3.1, he says, quote, porting RCR, uh, Retro City Rampage 2, MS-DOS has been on my mind for years. It was something I wanted to explore before RCR was even released. Could I crunch it down to run on old PCs? A Pentium, a 486, 
even a 386. How little RAM and hard disk drive space could I get away with? Could I build an installer that fits in the entire game on a single floppy disk? The computer programmer in me had this burning fascination. I should have realized sooner that it was only a matter of time before I finally had no choice but to finally scratch that itch and find the answers to these questions. Uh, he goes on to say, leaving my job at another game studio to start my own and develop RCR put the heavy weight of responsibility on my shoulders. Those realities meant that current, more sustainable platforms had to take priority. However, two years after the release of RCR, things had to, had calmed down and I was able to take a vacation. While that vacation instantly turned into long days of the computer porting Retro City Rampage to MS-DOS. It was the most fulfilling time I've had programming in years. It sounds like the life. Doesn't it? Yeah. You love you love a thing so much that you want to just fit it on everything. Like old old computers. That's fantastic. Like that's what you want to do on a vacation. I want to I want that mindset. Yeah. Cuz I mean that's essentially work that he's doing, you know. Yeah. But he loves it so much. That, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that happens to too many people. You know. Yeah. So. How big is a floppy disk? Like three megabytes? Oh, it's it says right on it. It's not very much. It might be three megabytes, five, Boy. seven, ten megabytes. It's not very much. Good for that guy. Yeah, love that. So that's the end of my nibble bits. Uh, Eric's nibble bits. The first Sony is adding some user input into its instant games collection process, allowing PS Plus members to vote for one of three games for each month. The winner of the voting will then be added to the PS Plus free games lineup. The losers will still be available in the PlayStation Store at a discounted price for PS Plus members. So that's kind of cool. That's awesome. I wonder how that works on the uh, business side. Like, if your if your games is one of the games that could be voted on, the game you developed is one of the games you could that's voted on. Are you kind of hoping like it doesn't win? Yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting question. Yeah, because would you get the same if you, if it was the winner, or yeah. if it was the winner and people bought it for a discounted price? Is the deal like done ahead of time? Yeah, maybe maybe Sony like pays for all those games up front. Yeah, and then maybe takes just takes all the sales or non sales for the free game. Don't know how that works. That's an, an interesting question, Corey. I'll I'd say we'd like to find an answer for next week but we won't remember when we're done with the episode so we'll contact your sources and see what you can come up with all right yeah let me send a text real quick okay uh moving on zombie u will be going multi-platform it will be relaunched on the pc ps4 and xbox one under the new name zombie spelled with just an i <laughs> on august 18th digitally with no announcements for a physical version having yet been made ouch so, cool yeah that actually might be one of the next games I play. I still have Will's copy of Zombie U that I've been meaning to get to. So that might it now might be a good time to play, you know, since it's no longer going to be U exclusive. It will become relevant again. Exactly. For a short time, yep. I think. Until everybody beats it again. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. I have a couple other little quick hits, Dan. Mm -hmm. that I just forgot to tweet out. Uh, Terraria is coming to the Wii U. And 3DS. And 3DS. I think it's perfect for the 3DS. Yeah. Perfect for the 3DS. Yeah, pretty good for the 3DS. Maybe I'll have to get it. Maybe I'm going to play the new. I'm going to get it on the 3 It's not supposed to come out until next year, though. Early 2016. My 3DS will be gone. Yeah, that's what I figured. That and uh, China lift its, lifted its uh, console games ban. Mm-hmm. Console, consoles that, ban. Sorry, my, yeah, I can't that, find my words tonight. That's a good thing. Metal. Yeah, I, I guess uh, from what I understand, you were able to buy, you were able to buy the consoles through like the gray market. They weren't entirely illegal, but uh, now it's it's obviously much less restricted. But I don't have much information beyond that. Yeah. Uh, and then Eric's last. Uh, nibble bit rocket league is getting its first dlc pack called the supersonic fury dlc pack and will include two new cars an american muscle car called dominus and a japanese street racer takumi along with customization decals nitrous and burnout rocket boosts cristiano and spinner wheels five all new paint types which are brush metal carbon fiber metallic pearl pearlescent and wood i definitely use the wood one that's awesome wood panels yeah wood panels 
Uh, and some new trophies, all available for three ninety nine in early August. There will also be a free game update, which offers an assortment of new content, including the first new map called Utopia Coliseum and more than 70 new country flags. Uh, also adding a spectator mode. Holy crap. So that will be in the free update. So that's cool. Game's stupid. Wait, I thought you liked no, it. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say. <laughs> it's funnier when Eric's here. <laughs> I kind of just, I kind of just want to like, I don't, I don't really care about any of that stuff to be honest with you. Really? But at the same rate, like, I just want to give them my money. Yeah. So it's like, ah, thanks. You know, here's. Just, <laughs> and what did you say? Three ninety nine. Yeah, four bucks. That's nothing. Good deal. Yes. Yeah. Good deal. Definitely. What would you, if you could uh, have something they added, what would it be? Game modes. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel too. Game clean, modes. Clean up ranked. Add a tournament mode. I don't know. I think multiplayer seasons would be fun too. Yeah, definitely. Rocket League team. Yeah. But that's what I would add. Yeah. How was, how was your week, Corey? Uh, it was all right. I don't. I really don't have much to talk about. I'm in kind of a dumpy mood. I had to go to the mall today. Yeah. The uh, shopping mall. Pretty- That'll bring your spirits down. Yeah, and uh, do you remember when Barnes and Noble was the bad guy, and now like Barnes and Noble's the the good guy, the good guy? Yeah, we should Amazon's gotta, the bad guy. We got to save Barnes and Noble. Yeah, and it's like yeah, because because Barnes and Noble kind of pushed out the mom and pop local bookstores. Yeah, and we all saw you've got mail. <laughs> but it's like well, there's a reason why that stuff doesn't work anymore. I went in, I had to buy dress shoes and like I went all over in the mall and I went into Macy's and I got so lost in Macy's. Like I couldn't find anything. I couldn't even find the men's section. And I get like, Oh, it's a, you know, a strategy to keep you walking around the store. You'll see stuff you want to buy. I don't think, I think very, I don't think that works anymore. Yeah, no, exactly. I don't think people think like that anymore. People, if you're going to the mall, most people today who are smart, like internet using people, if you're going to the mall, you have a very specific reason why you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, in my case, I'm leaving for a wedding tomorrow. I needed dress shoes. I couldn't order them off the internet because I would have just used Zappos or Amazon or something. Yeah, because... but that's something you have to try on. Right. You really do. Yeah, that, there's that too. Uh, so I was trying to find shoes, and you know, you go into Macy's, and I couldn't even find the men's section, never mind shoes. And it's like, I was so miserable. And it just made me want to just, like, give Amazon my money and be like, thank you for everything you do for me. Because I would be a miserable human being if I had to go to a store every time I wanted to buy something. For everything, yeah, I know. It's just just frustrating. And if you can't tell, I'm pissed off. Yeah, the UPS man makes, like, probably three stops (laughs) a week here and the FedEx man one or two. With stuff we ordered from Amazon or Target or wherever it may be. Uh, having two kids, too. They've always got something coming from, from Amazon. It's crazy. Yeah. I ended up getting stuff from DSW, Designer Shoe Warehouse. Mm. They, they had some pretty good prices. Yeah, not got, familiar with it. Got some Dockers dress shoes and a pair of Vans walking around shoes. Nice. Because apparently the shoes that I've had since 10th grade don't cut it anymore. <laughs> I think they're fine. They're probably fine. They're like ten years old, they're fine. You just spray them with a little Febreze. We have That's a little all. character to them. Surprisingly, they don't even stink. Really? Yeah, they just they just look a little grubby. Yeah, they still work. Who are you trying to impress? Nobody. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know, Dan. I wish I had some more interesting things to talk about. <laughs> I probably do. I just don't. I have no, no in that's about. fine. I get sour every time I have to go to a store for something. Oh my god! It, it got to a me. point where I was just like, I I got so fed up. I just like bought the closest thing next to me and went and sat down and waited for my girlfriend to finish. Yeah. And I actually tweeted, my life goal is to buy all the malls just so I can shut them down because they're miserable. Yeah. Malls are awful. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I don't see the window shopping thing being a big thing anymore. You know, like, I, I understand you can sort of make a day of it and like we're going to go shopping today. And that's fine. Like if your goal is to 
just kind of shop, like do that. If your goal is to window shop, then that's one thing. But like, if you're trying to find something, it is so frustrating to have to look for it. Yeah. Who makes a day of going shopping anymore? I'm sure it still happens, but oh, yeah. not, not, not a lot. I mean, part of the reason I don't have any money to buy anything, so that factors into my but thought process a little bit. Do you really think you would spend a day shopping? No. No, I would rather jump off a, a bridge or some very high place. It's not a Martha thing. No. It's such a waste of, of life. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> you are kind of miserable today, yeah, Corey. You are. I've really had more productive <laughs> times in the bathroom than I have, like, shopping. Yeah, because at least you're sitting on the toilet either, A, playing a game or reading an article about something, you know? Or just contemplating. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. I was so blinded by rage at the mall. <laughs> yeah. It's usually Dan or Eric talking about this stuff. Just just had a rough one. You know? I hear you. And I spent... <laughs> Here's a fun factoid. I spent more on myself today than I have this entire year. Just buying shoes. Just buying... What? Two pairs of shoes for myself. It's cray cray. Uh, this shirt I'm wearing, I've had since middle school. Uh huh. Well, what about the book purchase you just made? The scamp? Yeah. I'm not counting drunken purchases. <laughs> <laughs> drunken Amazon orders. By the way, you never left a copy at home. I was really mad. The scamp by Jennifer Pashley? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to browse through it. You had to give a book review. Have you read it? Have you cracked it open yet? What do you think, Dan? No, I, I would <laughs> guess not. Oh, uh, yeah. And then people are talking about video games in the chat. And then, yeah. like, I get home and try and like do the one thing that calms me and soothes me. And I play soothes me. And I boot up Rocket League, and I'm just getting my ass kicked. And it's like I can't even, I can't even get my jollies out of this. <laughs> well, playing a multiplayer game usually doesn't like. That doesn't calm the nerves very much, you know? That's true. But should have played a game of Heroes. No. That'll get you riled up. I should have played, like, Final Fantasy. One of yeah, Final some, Fantasy something, you've, played. something you've played a hundred times and you're not going to necessarily get anything new out of. You can just... You know how to exploit. <laughs> yeah, kick back, relax. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. I should have played. That's the same with else. me playing Mario Kart. Like, as much as I love it, when I play online, like, I just get pissed, you know? Yeah. Unless I win, which happens some of the time. But it's certainly not relaxing. Okay. Will, what do you have going on? I have a lot this week. Just kidding, not really. Uh, uh, I've, had, I've had a few days off of work. So I've been catching up on sleep instead of playing video games mm -hmm. because I'm a big pansy when it comes to sleep, but I need at least like six hours to function properly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have been getting up at 7 in the morning to play video games with my friend who is stationed in Guam in the Air Force, which has been pretty cool. Nice. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Done nothing very that's interesting. Oh, you, you got? Yeah, I don't have a good story like Corey. Okay. I wouldn't call that a good story. Well. It's just a, uh, a solid anecdote of society, ang anger in modern day society, right? What a dump some of those shoe stores are, too. <laughs> It looks like um, a lot of them look like someone just went through and ripped stuff off the shelves and it just doesn't get put back. And the worst part about it is there's people standing behind the counter, like employees standing behind the counter just staring at their phones and their store is a dump. Yeah. Who are Who's running these things? Yeah. I just, I don't know. Don't get me started on the phone thing. That drives me crazy. Even jobs I've hated, I've always tried to take a little bit of pride in my work. Yeah. And I, I think it's just embarrassing. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, Will. I didn't mean to cannibalize your weed. <laughs> I mean, I've done nothing, so that helped it out a little bit. I've got a few things to talk about. Uh, first, we got a new TV Ooh. again. Um, so, so the one we had last week was a was a 
that that we ordered that we got that I talked about last week. Obviously, I think I talked about the dead pixels on it. It was you, broken. You had to massage them. Yeah, I tried massaging it. I tried the flashy screen stuff. None of it worked. So we sent it back the next day. But we like the TV so much because of some of the features. We actually ordered a brand new one from Amazon, and it came Tuesday. And I set it up, but I made sure to like all the packaging was there and together and not broken or anything just in case we had to send it back but it, it was fine so uh a lot of the reason that we liked it so much was because it came with a built-in roku um so it was a it was a smart tv but not like a you know like a sony smart tv that had its own thing it was roku you know um i've had a lot of experience with roku i like both my rokus it has a ton of apps for it um but it, the the main like when you turn on the tv the main screen is roku um so up at the top it has the inputs um so i have my wii u and our blu-ray player hooked up to it as well as our antenna so those are all right at the top so you click those if you want to go to one of those uh, and then underneath it is all the apps and the the tv remote is an actual like roku remote oh, wow. with volume buttons on the side so it's a very simple remote there's not a lot of buttons to it but because we have two kids who like to take the remote and hide it or throw it throw it in the garbage or whatever uh, we can use the Roku app on our cell phones to control the TV and everything on the TV. So that's amazing because wow. we are constantly looking for the remote because the kids hide it on us and it gets lost or whatever. You know what? That's so. something that should come with every remote. It's genius. An app to use it. Yeah. Yeah. It's why, genius. Why hasn't that been a thing? I don't know. Uh, but it's also got, an, it's got a, a lot of uh, picture control things too. And one of the things it has is it's got a game mode. Uh, to reduce input lag, hmm. which I thought was cool. That's also genius. Um, yeah, I don't know why more TVs don't do that, but I don't know if there's a difference. I don't know what it reduces the input lag from to, you know, from it might be like from eight milliseconds to five milliseconds. I don't, I don't know. It didn't give numbers, but an unnoticeable amount to an even less. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Um, but I like if you're really into the Twitch type twitchy type games that you might you might notice it like i know will was when he bought his tv was interested in a tv with low input lag so mm -hmm. um crucial yeah <laughs> does, does make a difference and you know pc gaming monitors like uh the the really good ones only have one ms for uh response time input for input lag so it's very it's a crucial thing yes it is uh so there was that uh, yeah, I mean, I put for my week new things because we got a bunch of new stuff this week. Uh, I bought the Guild Wars 2 labeled Steel Series Flux headset from Whoop. It was $12. I didn't really need a new headset because I've got a decent pair of 7.1 surround sound headphones with a microphone on it. Um, but they're kind of big and clunky. And when I'm just you know trying to sit back and relax and play a game, like I don't want this heavy headset on my head. Uh, so they're a little bit smaller, a little bit more... Uh, comfortable than than my other ones. Uh, they were twelve bucks, so price can't. is right. Price is right. Guild Wars two, which I love, and I'm going to get back into pretty soon. Um, yeah, I've been using those, so they're nice. Uh, and then I got a wired LAN adapter for my Wii U. Wow. I've been having a lot of trouble with communications errors, uh, which could be Nintendo servers, but it also could be. Wi-Fi interference. I've got a lot of places in my house that have Wi-Fi interference. So I don't know. Nintendo's internet's just terrible. It's been better since I got the wired oh, land input. Oh yeah, it's been way better. Because uh, I was getting lag playing Mario Kart. I was getting lag playing Splatoon. Don't even try um, playing Smash online. Oh, I'm sure it's terrible. I'm sure. I was getting a lot of lag, so that eliminated my lag. I've still had one or two communications errors, but um, the lag is all but gone, which is nice. So hmm. that's what I got my week other than that i don't think i have anything dan you have a shopping story i do yeah when you were <laughs> home <laughs> yeah okay so i've been going out to my parents house a lot to swim it's been super hot here on wednesday uh i you know i packed up the kids and the dog and we went out to my parents to swim and i forgot the diaper bag like an idiot because you know carrying a, two kids out the door and a dog is is a pain in the butt and i forgot the diaper bag so i went uh which that, that had my daughter's food in it She's got some food allergies, so we're really specific about what we feed her. So I went over to the local grocery store, um, Hollenbeck Sure Save, for those of you that, that are sure fine. Sure fine, yeah. Sure fine, uh, for those of you that are local. And uh, it took me quite a while to find a baby food that wasn't expired. 
in the Hollenbeck Sure Save. And a lot of them, like when we buy them at like uh, our Target or Wegmans or whatever, uh, usually the expiration date is like a year from now. So like a lot of the ones we have now in our cupboard expire in summer of 2016. Well, some of the ones that were on the thing had expired in December of 2014. Some of them were early 2015, and it took me quite a while of poking through and finding some in the back that weren't expired yet. But even they had been sitting there for a long time. It's a good thing that you noticed that, because usually when I buy things, I don't even check the expiration date. Yeah. I just buy it. Well, I mean, for me, I wouldn't care, but it, you know, it's for my for your kid. for my daughter, who, like I said, has food issues anyway. Oh, I was, I was not happy about that. And you get the small town markup, so it's probably more expensive than yeah it was like 30 cents more than we would pay for one one thing of baby food i don't know man did you ask did you say hey you got any of these that aren't (laughs) no i should have because that's that's bad that's baby food that you have on the shelf that's expired now it's probably fine but you don't know that one of them had weird white things in it (laughs) chunks (laughs) were they all dusty uh no i don't think they were dusty That's i mean i'm sure they take them off the shelf and dust them off when they add new ones into the back you know dan but, <laughs> giving them way too much credit that's <laughs> true that's true so that was my uh, that was my shopping experience i was only in there for like five minutes and most of that was was looking for unexpired baby food and I saw, it pissed me off i saw amazon wants to open up uh grocery stores oh really where you Obviously not anywhere near us, but uh, yeah. I think they're starting in like San Francisco where everything starts. But they're doing uh, you you order all your groceries online through Amazon and then you just drive up and they load up your car and off you go. Genius. That's brilliant. Yeah. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. That's going to change everything. Maybe. If done well. Yeah. I think so. Well, I used right. to do when I was in uh, living in Brooklyn. I did uh, Fresh Direct, which was the same same idea. Same idea, yeah. yeah. Just the grocery show up and a little bit pricier, but the convenience of not having to go to the nasty grocery store and fight over every little inch of real estate and oh, and, and carry everything yeah from their home yeah it's uh, worth the the convenience. Yeah, trying to maneuver through a grocery store is the worst thing. Oh my gosh! And it's like everybody there is for bl- out for blood. Mm-hmm. People are nasty, man. Well, because people have this mindset like, if I'm not, it's like people who say like, oh, to be a good driver, you have to be an aggressive driver. It's like no, but people have that mentality like in a grocery store. It's like, well, if I'm gonna get through this, I have to be aggressive, and that's not. No, you don't. They're cutting you off, stiff arming you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> we should put out a PSA. Anyway, uh, we'll take a quick break, quick break and be back with what we played right after this. Did you just oh, quack, quack, Dan? I don't know what happened. We'll take a quick quack. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. My mouth is dry. I, haven't, I don't sleep very much. What time is it there, Dan? Eight. Uh, oh, guys, one oh eight twenty seven. You guys just want to start oh, this episode over. One oh eight thirty. Yeah, let's let's scrap the whole thing and start all over again. Why would we do that? We're moving too quick. No, we're over an hour. No, but we're, we're moving quick. Oh, I, think. I know. That's a, that's a good thing though, because we've only got like eighty megs left on our <laughs> bandwidth. So if this is a short one, it's fine. Well, Dan, I don't have much that I played. Yeah, I've got a few things. I feel like I have a clap coming for you, Dan. Well, no. where'd you get the clap? <laughs> no, like, not not the STD, Corey. Not, not the clap. A clap. Oh, oh, just one. Like a round of... <laughs> <laughs> one crab. <laughs> God. Just, just one herpy. <laughs> one aid. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I should have caffeinated before we started this episode. I'm tired too. Feeling sleepy. Oh my god, I feel like absolute shit. You're just having the day, Corey. (sighs) (laughs) 
I've been good. Like, I've been trying, you know, being healthier. Like, trying to take care of myself a little bit better. I just, I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> you need to embrace the sloth. Like, uh, last weekend, I was designated driver. I'm never designated driver because I, I hate it. But I did it last weekend. Mostly because I wanted Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> that was you. <laughs> it was a small victory. <laughs> I was really craving Taco Bell early in the day, so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll DD tonight." Uh, it was a a miserable night because nobody wants to be the only sober person amongst amongst a sea of drunk people. No, that's but, not. Uh, got my Taco Bell at the end of the day. Had the Captain Crunch balls. Oh, yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, eh, not bad. But got the uh, what did I get? I got Crunch Wrap. Love the crunch wrap, and then I got the stuffed nacho thing that they have now. Yeah, oh, stuffed nacho. That's pretty good. Yeah, chicken or steak or beef. Beef. Yeah. Why don't you put a banner for gold mine? I don't know what gold mine is, Sarah. Uh, I know. Why would I? I don't know. I don't know what that is. Gold mine. I don't know. Oh, Corey, we need to uh, we need to update our Amazon banner on our website. Why? Do you, uh, because they're changing the coding. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I think just, emails for a while. I'll send you the. Yeah, just. Do you want me to email it to you? The embed code. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Okay. I've got. I've. I'll it's, probably do it tomorrow. Is the, the same that, size ad? Yeah, it'll be the same ad. It just. It's updated. Whatever. I don't yeah, know. that's cool. Uh, I probably won't be able to get to it until Sunday night, though. That's fine. Um, it's going to expire tomorrow, oh. but it'll just put up a PSA until then. Huh. So I, I, no one's ordered anything off of it for months. So, Speaking of, Will, what do you want to do about swapping the PS4? It seems like the best day would be drop it off Sunday night. Do you have any idea when you're going to be home? I have no idea. It's a five-hour drive. I would guess we'd leave no later than noon. But okay. I can't be sure. Let me know when you leave. The thing is, is I could also drive out on Monday. No. But then I wanted to come home on Sunday. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. To spend the day, because I don't have to work. I spend the day and swim. No, just, you, just gotta, you just gotta let me know when you leave Sunday. Because if you leave too late, and then I'll just wake up early Monday. And do you have to work Monday? Oh, that's right. You work Monday. I don't. I work really early on Tuesday, though. Well, I don't want you to just come and like drop off the PlayStation and leave. That's ridiculous. Four-hour drive, Corey. I like to drive and leave home. You're crazy. Well, Sunday, if it's Sunday, Eric's coming too, so. Oh. Yeah, I can't imagine, because I'm going, I'm driving back. Sophie's going on vacation from there, so I'm riding back with her brother and his girlfriend. Just text, imagine. just text him when you leave. Plan on Sunday and text him when you leave, and he can know if it's, if you're, you know, taking five hours to get home. Yeah. I can leave, like, an hour before you're getting home, because it takes two hours. Yeah. Yeah, we could we could do that. Yeah. And then so, we can go to Voss's and get barbecue. Yeah, Bloodborne. That's the only yeah, thing you want me to bring. That's it. And like I said, I can I can drive it out. I'll, I'll either come on Saturday or Sunday. All right. I'll probably come Saturday because hopefully I'll have it beat by Saturday. But I got a house or do, doggy sit for Chris and Mary. Aww. I figure, what better way to doggy sit than to bring Ranger out to Newark Valley for a swim? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on. Yeah. Come on, Ranger. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it Sunday. Or they're coming back on Sunday. I don't know. All right, shall we? Sure. No. No. 
Let's call it an episode. Uh, Tito says they're getting rid of the active time battle system in Final Fantasy Seven. I heard about that. I heard about that. I'll be interested to see what they come up with. Yeah. Only because um, I'm usually for not messing with the originals, but yeah. I mean, I'll take I'll take a little changing. You know, everyone's gonna hate that game now. Probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, people who haven't played it before will probably still like it, and a handful of people that played it before, but. I think purists are going to just hate it. This isn't the game I played in 1997. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, that's the point. Exactly. I just feel like they would have made a lot less people angry if they just updated graphics. Yeah. If you, if you want to play the one that came out in 1997, you can download it on the Still, PSN store. It's, uh, it's on Steam, too. Oh, well, that's I right. Yeah. I own it. That and I think thir- thirteen, I think I bought for like eight bucks maybe. Yeah. All right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. Episode two ten of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. We are now in what we played. Will, what do you have? Played some Heroes of the Storm. Hots. Oh yeah, I had a forty five minute match. Jeepers. Which for people who don't know is a really long time for that's, Heroes of the Storm. That's a really long match. Because usually games are like twenty minutes or whatever. Twenty, twenty five, thirty seems long in yeah. that game. Um so it was on Tomb of the Spider Queen, which is the map the objective where you collect the gems and you put them into the the whatever, the altar. The well. The well. And then out come spiders to help you push. Um, and we were getting it handed to us within the first 15 minutes of the game. Our Tyrael said GG before we even lost, and morale was low. But a little something happened. We just kept turning it around and like getting some kills. I was Nova. I died like five times within the first 15 minutes, which just wasn't going well. But the game went on, and like we kept turning it around a little bit and stopping them from stealing the boss and stuff like that. Uh, then minute 45 rolled around and it was just going, I ended up going like 40 and 6 and 158,000, 100,000, uh, hero damage. Mm-hmm. That's having a really good game with Nova. Uh, but the problem that, the reason we lost is because when we kept going for the boss, we'd kill Leoric. He can cheat death mm-hmm. and he can spawn wherever his stupid ghost is. So he was spawning in like 30 seconds instead of like the 60 because we were like level 28 by the mm-hmm. time the game ended. Wow. So Leoric was the reason we lost because he's the new hero and he kept spawning where the boss was and he does a ton of hero damage because he's really strong and powerful. He's more like an off tank, like he can deal a lot of damage. So like he would kept, he kept ruining us stealing the boss and like chasing us off because it was only three of us that were doing it. It was me, Johnny, and Tyrael. I don't know. We had an Abathur who was... Abathur doesn't actively participate in the team fights. Right. And the Chen was off doing God knows what <laughs> in the bottom of the lane. Right. So, like, we kept on getting chased off, and then, like, the team would come in and start, then we'd go in, and we'd kill them off, and then start doing it. Then they would, the Leoric would spawn, chase us off, the team would go, and that went on for probably, like, 15 minutes. No. And eventually, the Leoric went into our base, because uh, the only thing, there was only the two cores left. And he kept attacking it, and we didn't realize it, and then he would die, and he would spawn and hit it again. And he kept lowering our core and just spawning next to it and hitting it. And, like, it was at, like, 50 when we noticed, so we went in and killed him. But we couldn't push because, like, they would come in, and we'd push him back, and then the orc would spawn, so we'd have to stay by our core. And eventually, wow. like, we couldn't we couldn't push enough to win, and we lost because of it. Wow, so that's I, pretty smart, though. So like, for a late-game strategy, just have Leoric camp the core. He died probably, like, 20 times that yeah, game. I'm so sure. I hate Leoric now. He's <laughs> one of my least favorite heroes. OP. He's really not that bad. Oh. I was just really mad that we lost that game. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, 45 minutes, it was, it was a battle. Mm-hmm. Um I played well, though, so I was really happy. Nice. Um, but the other thing I played was... Oh, Hearthstone. I bought one of the expansions. I bought the Nax Ramus expansion. Mm-hmm. Corey, I figured you'd appreciate that. Yeah. Well, my decks don't do well against the 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 story, whatever. No? Mission, the story battles. No, I can't beat anybody. And I'm too lazy to figure out how to build a deck that'll be really good for it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I could send you my rogue deck build. That's what I use to beat the adventures. I might need that because I want to beat them, but and get the cards. But like I, I don't know. I'm bad at Hearthstone, so 
for whatever reason that rogue deck. I think I I think I swept the adventures in, really? in Nax, and I think I only lost once with that same deck in Black Rock Mountain. Wow. Yeah, and it's a terrible deck for like constructed play. Really it happens to be good for the adventures for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna need that then because I want to go through the expansions and then get ready for the the grand tournament. Are you gonna buy? Do you have to buy to get the cards? No. I might not. Because how much is it? 20. Probably 20. You get like, I think if you buy it, you get like, how many card packs? A bunch of card packs. Are you going to buy? Or wait, how does that work? I don't remember. Because I don't know, do you need to buy to like get in to get those cards? Is that I don't the... remember. What they do for Goblins vs. Gnomes? The podcast I listened to were talking about it and they couldn't really remember either. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I think I think you just get a bunch of card packs if you if you pay. Or you know what it is? Maybe there's like certain class cards that you only get if you pay. And yeah. The other sure. ones, like the common yeah, ones like... or the the neutral ones, I should say, you you can get anyway. Okay. Maybe that's what it is. That makes sense. That does make sense. Maybe I will buy yeah. in. I don't know. I'll be buying. It. I'm probably gonna pre-order it. Like I said, I did uh, Black Rock Mountain. I did all with coins. So you haven't really had to spend money in the game. No. I bought Nax, but that's when I had money. <laughs> uh, Black Rock Mountain, I didn't. And what, is the I grand, what is the Grand Tournament, by the way? I have no idea. It's a Warcraft thing. Oh. It's yeah, I know. In World no. of Warcraft. But uh, the funny part about it is there's no tournament mode in it. And everybody's been clamoring for a tournament mode in Hearthstone. There isn't a and tournament the mode? The Grand Tournament expansion does not have a tournament mode. Hmm. But they sort of answered that question. I forget who was interviewing them, but they're like, there's a time and a place for it, and this isn't the time right now. Hmm. It's like, well, if this isn't the time, I don't, I don't know when is. Yeah. Blizzard's so weird with everything. Mm -hmm. they're they are like, weird. They're, they're like Nintendo East. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's just I wish they didn't make such good games. I know, right? They could take as long as they want for everything, and everybody still buys it. Yeah. And not give anybody what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Diablo 3 was a disaster when it first came out. Yep. It's still super popular. That game is pretty much Diablo 4 at this point for how different it is. Yeah. They added a whole bunch of stuff in a recent update. Mm-hmm. Which is what I want to play. By the way, Corey, we got to play through that. And Path of Exile. I got to buy the expansion for Diablo 3. That's probably still like 40 bucks. Yeah, the price of their games really never goes down. <laughs> Diablo 2 is probably still 30 bucks in the battle chest. I think it's 20. That's still a lot. That's still too how, much how for Diablo 2. <laughs> God. The Lords of Destruction expansion really... Uh held its value. Mm -hmm. I think actually I checked recently and it was 2025. They should really put that on their Battle.net thing. It is. Download. It is. Is it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't show up like um, Hearthstone, Heroes, oh, okay. Diablo. But you can buy it and download but it you, that way. Yeah. Okay. Some of their older games are on there. I was going to say that would, that would make sense if they didn't have those on there. They should... I don't know how this works because I'm not a programmer or anything like that, but they should make it. So Diablo 2 works easily with the new Windows updates because trying to get that game to work is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do with the computer. Yeah. It just won't run. And it, like, comes up with weird colors, then it crashes, and, like, I run it in compatib compatibility mode. It just doesn't, doesn't work, want to yeah. work. Hmm. I don't know. It's frustrating because I like to play that every now and again. Yeah. That's it, Dan. I don't okay. Can't play anything. What do you got, Corey? Uh, I've been playing a little more Miss Etrian Mystery Dungeon. I really like that game. That game's a lot of fun. Will, I want you to play it because I think you'd like it. Uh, let me borrow it. I'll let you borrow it. I gotta. I want to beat it first, though. I think. I think I'll play it enough to beat it. Okay. Uh, I got a good five-hour car ride ahead of me tomorrow, so hopefully, if I can avoid motion sickness, I'll be able to play that. <laughs> good luck. Uh, but speaking of motion sickness. The new game I wanted to have to talk about this week is the Talos Principle, which Eric kindly bought and allowed me to play on Steam Family Share. Excuse me. 
And uh, I immediately went into the settings to make sure all the graphical things were okay and stuff. But something that has its own setting, like menu, is motion sickness. It's like audio, video, controller, motion sickness. And it's like, well, apparently this game makes people motion sick. Uh, but I just didn't touch anything with that at first, but played for like five minutes and immediately got that nausea, like car sick feeling. Well, why is that, do you think? It's just the way the graphics are. And if you go into the motion sickness menu, there's all sorts of options you can change, like field of view, game speed, uh, motion bob. And I was like, well, that sounds like something just waiting to make me puke. <laughs> so I turned that off. I turned, uh, what else did I turn down? I can't remember. There's a couple other things I turned off. And uh, still, like, I just, I couldn't play it. Huh. Just so sick. And it sucks because it's a lot, it's a lot like Portal. Yeah, um, that's what I've heard. In terms of like the way the, the the way the game is set up, it's all based on line of sight, and it's first person. Or you can do oh, that's another thing I changed for motion sickness is I switched it from first person to third person, which seemed to help a little bit, but not enough. Uh, but it's all based on line of sight, and you're moving these tripods that have jammers on them to stop like sentries that are marching around or uh, cameras. You got to jam those to block them from seeing you. And you're just kind of like moving through tombs and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, I only played like 20 minutes because I was so sick by the time I was done. I had to lay down and it's a feeling that didn't go away for a while. Hmm. And I still kind of feel motion sick today after playing it yesterday. Wow. So you want to be Oculus ready. <laughs> I know. Me and Eric immediately started teasing Corey about Oculus Rift. I'm you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to waste all this money. Well, here's the thing, Corey. What was the other game you played on X? Was it Half-Life Half 2? Half-Life, yeah. That you tried to play on Xbox and it did the same thing. Most first-person shooters don't do that, right? No, no. Certain things. I just got to find out what they are. Yeah, what, what, which graphic set? Did you like look up like what common graphic settings that cause motion sickness? No, I should. I know um, motion blur tends yeah. to bother me. It annoys me. It doesn't make me sick, but it does. Motion blur definitely annoys me. It makes game. me sick. I had to turn it off in Dying Light. Yeah. And uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter, I had to turn it off because it was making me sick. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to turn the game speed down because I didn't want to move slower than I could. You know. Yeah. It's like who wants to who wants to make their character slower than what's available to them? But maybe I have to. I don't know. Hmm. It's like it's almost like the the game fidelity is too high or something. Like it needs to be crappier quality. I don't know. Lower maybe lower resolution. I try try running at seven twenty. I could try that. I don't know. But yeah, it's gonna wearing the headset, the virtual reality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jake says in the chat, you need to change your settings from wiener to man. That might. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> yeah. Demand. That's funny. But I really want to play Talos Principle. Really yeah. Do. I love puzzle games. Yeah. No, that, was, that was really well received, too. That yeah. one. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'll figure that out. I, I definitely do want to play that. I played a lot more Rocket League. I, I wanted to get pro before we recorded. Uh, I'm level 18 now. I think 20 is pro. I've been working oh. on my aerial stuff. <laughs> practicing that i haven't been doing too well because i've been forcing myself to use ball cam mode yeah which i'm not used to i'm getting better at it and uh i've been forcing myself to do more aerial stuff like fly out of nowhere and score goals and block shots that are up at the top of the net kind of thing yeah um so just like forcing myself to practice those things doesn't bode well for the team but at least i'm getting better um i think i like two on two the most Okay. Really? I've not tried two on two. I've done three on three and four on four. I've had way more success and fun doing two on two than I have. I think, and part of the problem is there's always like, there's so many times where I've had like a perfect shot lined up for the goal in a split second before I hit the ball. My teammate comes from an awful angle and knocks it out of your way. Yeah. Way See that? That's, that's me that does that to the other to, to my own teammates. That's so frustrating. Yeah. And I know I know you're just trying to help, like you're not. Yeah. 
I just suck. That's all it is. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Um, I knocked a goal in to our goal. It was really embarrassing. I wanted, that, to, I wanted to hide. Oh, that I do that more often than yeah. than it should. Well, sometimes it's just a bad deflection. You yeah, know, you're you're trying to block it and it just bounces off you the wrong way. And... No, like I was chasing it and went to cut behind it to knock it away, and I and ended up hitting it forward more. Yeah. My yeah. teammate, OMG. <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. I just wish. I wish there was more to do in it, you know? I, I like the season. Yeah, but once you do that, like, I don't know. I felt good winning the championship. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I guess, I, what I'm trying to say is, it has a, as, as great as the game is, is it's going to have a hard time, like, making my end-of-the-year lists because there's not... That kind of game, like, there's not much meat yeah what you on you know mm-hmm. what i mean like I, I is i have a blast with it and it's a ton of fun but like what i take out of it is very surface you know we i mean we kind of have the same mentality on that yeah you know with multiplayer games generally yeah um i'll play it for a month and that'll that'll be it generally mm-hmm. uh, mario kart 8 is an exception for me uh but i think part of that is because i'm it's one a game i'm actually decent at good at yeah so. so you don't think this is going to make any of your end of the year list? Oh, it'll, it'll, it'll definitely make Compet- the list. Multiplayer. Yeah, competitive multiplayer, definitely. But, like, game of the year stuff, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. The metric I use, and I've talked about it before, is kind of what I take out of it. it a game can be really fun, and, and sometimes it can be so much fun that that's enough to get it on my list. But it's more like the bigger picture, like like I said, like what I take out of it, you know, that's why a game like papers, please can make my list or a game like journey or, you know, limbo or smaller, even though they're smaller games, there's something that you take from it. And, and there's that, I don't know. That, that, that's more meaningful than the next multiplayer match. Right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh So, I don't know. Uh, Fantastic. So much fun though. It is a lot of fun. And so hard to put down. It's like one more, yeah. just one more, just one more. Yeah. And it's 2 a.m. and you're like, I really got to go to bed, but just one more. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Anything else, Corey? Nah. All right. What's a beaten game for Rocket League? I was I was going to ask that. We talked about it, but getting think, pro, pro level? I think hitting pro. Level 20, yeah. that's a good, what, like 15 hours probably? I don't know. We should probably have Eric's input for this too because he's played the most. True. Yeah. So we'll wait. You know, if he's if he's back next, he should be back next week. We'll get we'll get his input on what uh, what a beaten game for Rocket League should be, or is because if it's a season, like I beat a season and I probably played the least. I out mean, of all the, of us. the credits do roll after you beat the season. Dude, did they? Mine did. Oh, well, then there, that that's it. <laughs> that's the metric. Yep. Well, I still want to bring Eric in. No, nope, and well. We have a standing rule, and you guys keep trying to break it. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I know for some games it's but bullshit, you, but you could, you could also do like a. Fi- I I think you can do like a five game season, can't you? With like one round of playoffs. I think eight was the least. Eight was the least. See, I did a twenty seven week with three rounds of playoffs. I think mine was eighteen, with with three rounds of playoffs. All right, maybe it's nine games then. Yeah. Multiples of nine. Okay. We'll have that discussion with it with Eric here. I think that's only fair. Um, for me, what I played, uh, Splatoon reached level cap, which I talked about level twenty. Played the new map, which is I think called Camp Triggerfish. Uh, it's kind of like a it's like a camp basically. Uh, there's two lanes like into the middle area where there's some battle, but the this one more than more than the other ones has uh, like different paths you can take to get into the middle and like different levels and stuff. It's really really pretty neat. Uh, st- I'm still playing a fair amount of Splatoon. Really excited for the update. Well, I guess it's next week at this point. Next well, Friday? No, Wednesday. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But I'm excited because I hit the level cap, so I want to be able to go up more levels and and more gear is always a nice thing too. Congrats, okay. Dan. Thanks. Is that a beaten game? I beat the story mode a few weeks ago. So did the credits roll? Oh yeah, I already put that on my list already. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I spent. Kind of a lot of time playing this week is Mario Kart 8. 
I talked about Mario Kart last week, and I just one of those things. I just I was like, hey, I'll I'll boot it up. So I got back in, into playing online. I played with someone with seventy thousand score in Mario Kart Eight. Wow. Um, I've played. Well, I I should say I, I just hit the one hundred hour mark on Mario Kart Eight, so I put a hundred hours into it. Nice. Um, most of those playing online, uh, my score is only about three thousand five hundred. So you can imagine someone with seventy thousand. How much she's played to to get to that point, um, but that wasn't the most impressive thing. I was able to finish ahead of her two times out of like the probably ten races we played together in in our in our group. I finished first in one of them, and then I finished second to someone, and she was she was behind me. So uh, I was pretty proud of myself. My Mario Kart skizils. Well done, Dan. Work, Thank you. Man. I know you, you messaged us and you're like, I'm playing somebody with a 70,000 rank in MK8. And I'm like, why are you playing Mortal Kombat 8? <laughs> <laughs> I took a picture, though. Um, and then I took a picture of my, my, maybe I'll put it on Twitter, of me finishing first. And then someone else was second. And I think this, this uh, her name was Letizia. And I actually, I, I searched for her because I thought she might have been a pro. Uh, I don't think she is, but um, there are some pictures of that people had taken with with her, like in the in the leaderboards. Um, on, I think I did a Google image search for Letizia was her name, um, but she was one of those people that hit the back when the the score cap was nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. She was one of those people that was there because. Mm-hmm. This person had taken a, a picture of the list with all the all the racers like at nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, you know, score the cap at the at that time. Yeah. So, fun game though. God damn. How do you hit that level or that that point level? I, mean, I don't know. Like I said, seventy thousand. Okay. For for example, like when when you start playing Mario Kart eight, you start with your score is a thousand, and depending on how well you do, you get plus or minus points. The most I've gotten is like plus twenty four or twenty five in a race, depending on how how you finish and how the other players rank against you. Like if you're playing all people with that are around your your score, you won't get as much score for finishing first. But if you're playing with people like for me, a lot of people I'm playing against have seven or eight thousand for their score. So when I win a race, I get you know twenty four twenty five points added in my score um and then when you don't do it like when you when you do poorly like if you're a higher score than everyone else you get more points taken away yeah um so it's, it, it scales based on on your competition too so this person you know but she finished first in probably 80 80 percent of the races 90 percent of the races that we raced together i don't know how exactly it was 10 15 maybe 20 races we did together but she finished first like most of them so I just blows my mind how many races you'd have to do. It's a lot. There's got to be a way to grind it. Just play a lot. <laughs> play a lot of races. That's the only way to do it. But even so, like even when she won, because all of us were, you know, three thousand, four thousand. I think there was someone in there that was like nine thousand. So she only got ten, eleven points for winning. Oh, God. So, yeah. But what I spent the most time playing this week was the Bureau XCOM Declassified. I talked about that that was going to be the next game on my list. Uh, it's a third-person squad-based shooter, like Gears of War, but also reminds me a lot of Mass Effect 2 and 3. Uh, didn't review very well, uh, but I didn't think it was that bad of a game, what I played so far. It's a lot like the XCOM in, the, in that you take your squad into a battle, and the classes are similar. Uh, there's four different ones. You have a support class, sniper class, soldier, and engineer class. Uh, which you recruit and level up like an XCOM, the strategy game, I should say. Uh, also, your squaddies can die if they're not revived during battle and they die for good. So that's that's similar to the XCOM strategy. Uh, and you also have control over the equipment, the weapons, backpacks unlocked as you progress through the campaign. And then when you're in a battle, uh, you hit spacebar to bring up the tactical menu because, like I said, it's a third-person tactics-based shooter. Um that's where you give your, your squaddies commands. So uh, using any abilities that they have based on their class. Uh, also like pointing out targets and movement. Um, so things I liked about it, tactical combat works really well. Uh, it gives you exponus, ex- bonus experience for, for, for doing combos. So like uh, the, the main character, his name is um, William... Will, uh, frick, what's his last name? William Shatner. I wanted to say William, William Turner, but that's from, that's from Pirates of the Caribbean. Carter. Carter, yes, thank you. William Carter. 
Uh, so like he he has a lift ability. So like you know I would lift someone up and I would have my sniper do a critical strike, which is a headshot. Um, and you get bonus ex- bonus experience for that. So, uh, and then the weapons are familiar to XCOM fans. Uh, I'm very close to finishing the game. Didn't beat it. Yet. I wanted to have it beaten, but I played Trove uh, a couple nights this week, so I didn't didn't get to beat XCOM: The Bureau Disclassified, uh, Declassified. Uh, yeah, the plasma and laser weapons. If you played XCOM, you'll you'll know those, and they're pretty cool. I really like the squatty classes too, uh, and the customizations. And upgrades feel very similar to to XCOM games. Uh, dislikes, I found the story mostly uninteresting. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's it's a strategy game, but I don't know. I couldn't couldn't really get into the story. Uh, the missions are also fairly for, formulaic. You'll wander through corridors, uh, and then you'll go into an open place, and that's where the battle takes place. So that that was kind of under in, uninteresting. It's one of the things I didn't like about uh, Dead Space. Too. It, was, it was just repetitive that that sort of that sort of thing, and then my last is like uh, clunky movement and cover, getting stuck on corners and stuff when you're trying to move around in a third person shooter is awful. You know, because you'll go slam up against the wall and like you try to back out and it won't, or you try to go around the corner and it, you'll get stuck. It's very frustrating when you're trying to play a third person shooter. Um, and and uh, I should say your squatty AI is really pretty bad too. You really have to micromanage all their movements because otherwise they'll just be somewhere where they're going to get shot and killed. You can never depend on your AI teammates. No, it's pretty pretty bad. Um, really, I think like Gears of War is probably the best squad based third person shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just feels so nice, and this definitely doesn't uh, doesn't hold up to that. Uh, overall, I'd probably give it like a seven out of ten so far. It's not a recommend though. It's a decent game, but not as bad as as it reviewed. I don't think. But would you rec- would you recommend it to Corey? No, no, Corey would hate it. No question. <laughs> no question. But it, I mean, it's okay. I think I bought it for like five bucks on a sale. It's worth worth five bucks. I, I won't play it again. I should say that too. That's a. How that's do you a, feel about the people that paid sixty dollars for it when it came? Oh, out? that I, I would not be happy about paying sixty bucks for that's it. What I did. Yeah. Didn't even play it. Yeah. This was the XCOM game before. Yeah, before XCOM the good one. Enemy Unknown was a thing. Yeah, it's it started development way before, but I think it came out after. Yep. It did. Yeah, it did. So it was a. Uh, a lot of people said you can tell it, it went through like development hell. Like I think there was a lot of controversy when it was developed, and like people got laid off or fired that were lead project managers or whatever. You know, it definitely you could feel that kind of in the game. It's I don't know, it's decent, average seven. Not a recommend. Don't touch this game, Corey. <laughs> oh, I won't. Don't you worry. <laughs> I, I I think you might like some of the part things that remember me, which also reviewed kind of average. But I don't think you'd like anything about XCOM. So that's all I got. Still trying to decide what I'm going to play for next week, but I should have I should have uh, XCOM beaten tonight. I'm going to go upstairs and finish it. So you should play Divinity. I should play Divinity, but I I spent most of my year playing really long RPGs so far. Oh my God. So I don't really want to add another 70 hour RPG onto my list. I'm trying to play short games right now. I do want to play it though. But Divinity is great. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I have no doubt. But I still have to finish Pillars of Eternity. So, Wasteland Two, I've got to still beat. Oh yeah, that game. But anyway, feedback. Corey, you want to call it feedback? Yeah, I figured we'd take a break so we could collate this before we. Yeah, get, yeah, we could take a break right and into it. Finish the episode uh, in one note. Yeah. All right, yeah, we'll take a quick break and be back with feedback and answers to question of the week right after this. Okay. Can't just tell me to call up feedback as if I call have it feedback prepared. Now. It's all Eric's fault. I need a drink. Two dashons under the oh, no. dash Yeah, a brew over there. Have a under brew. the age of one. Oh. I'm tired. Oh, get to use the hot tub. Ooh. Yeah, that, is, that is good money. 50 a night. Good deal. What are you talking about? Valerie. 
Dog sitting. Oh. Corey, are we going to Edmonton or no? I don't know. Probably not. I don't have a pot to piss in. Corey, I'll spot you. Okay. I gotta get a job for the winter. I don't have a pot to piss in either. I hear you, Corey. <clears throat> All right. What do I? What? How does feedback work here? Uh, there, I mean, there's probably not a lot, right? I don't know, Dan. Just uh, e the email. I mean, you put it all in the feedback folder in the email, don't you? Usually, unless somebody does something else with it. Feedback. Oh, I think was, we got more. It, it was mostly answers to question of the week. My phone's going to die, too. I don't have my charger in here. Now my phone froze. Gee, <sighs> idiot. Yummy. Yeah. It's a house party, come on everybody. Do 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 Yeah, I thought about uh Zombie U, <laughs> but I also kinda I've been thinking about playing the Metro series again. Might do that. I thought maybe Shadows of Mordor. That's a, I gotta beat that game still. It's really good. Oh, What else was on my list? XCOM. <laughs> I want to play XCOM again before before the new one comes out in the fall. I gotta play the expansion. Enemy yeah, I haven't played any enemy within. I want to do the Long War too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. All right. Mm. Um. Did that one. Twenty second was last week's, right? Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think I got it all. Yeah, when I checked before we started, there was there wasn't a ton. There was like maybe four or five answers to question of the week, and then and then uh, feedback from Jake. I think was it. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 210 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. We are now ready for feedback. Corey, what do you got for us? We'll start with Antonius K, Dan. Okay. Who writes us, what's your fave LTTP, late to the party game? The game that you knew existed but never got into until a good amount of time passed, at which point it takes over your life. For me, it has been Diablo 3, which I picked up cheap on PS4 about a month ago and is now burning a groove in my hard drive. Nice. Do you guys have any uh, any games? I do. What do you got? Mass Effect. I didn't play the first two until several, several years after they came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there for the third third one when that released, but mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I never wanted to play until I started the podcast, and you guys spoke so glowingly of it, and I figured I should play it at some point, and yeah. I did, and I loved it. Some of your favorite games. Yeah, I think this, I don't remember which one, but one of them is in my top five. Yeah. Mass Effect 2 is my favorite, but. I might, might be two, I think, two mm -hmm. or three, but yeah, that'd be mine. Gotcha. Corey? Um, I'm trying to think. I know I was late to the party on Dota, Dota 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't say that has consumed me, though. Oh, uh, jeez. I don't know. The only one I, that I came up with, well, there there was two games that, that I was late to the party for. One was uh, a sci-fi MMORPG called Tabula Rasa, huh? uh, which had been out for a little while and I stumbled across it like two or three months before it shut down and I played it a lot for those two or three months before it shut down uh, it was it was a lot of fun but didn't have a, a big player base but the one the one that fits your question perfectly um, a game that you were aware of and uh, didn't play until much later on was planet side uh, I was aware of the planet side I you, did you guys you and Eric played it at Jared's or something yeah, I played a little Planet Side. Um, I bought it much later on after I'd been out for a few years, uh, and 
I got into it as much as you can get into get into a game like that. Uh, sucking, you know, being the only one that doesn't really know what they're doing. Um, doesn't I didn't have a guild or you know anything like that, and uh, I would constantly get my butt whipped just being out on my own. Uh, but I had a lot of fun with it. I played it for probably a good two months like that, just sucking. <laughs> Getting it handed to you. Oh yeah. Night. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, everyone that played it was super good at it and super organized and whatnot. And I was just a lone, lone wolf, lone, uh, lone cannon fodder. I think. So. Mercenary. Yeah. That was my answer. We got a couple of answers in the chat. Twitch.tv slash Thumbstick Athletes. We yeah, live yeah. stream every episode. Tito says, mine was Bioshock. Didn't care for it when watching my roommate play it. Got into it like three or four years after it came out. Now it's in my top ten. Yeah. yeah. Good choice for Bioshock. Yeah, Bioshock is awesome. Jake says, Just Cause 2. Valerie says, Unreal Tournament. Oh, okay. Both good answers. Um, I'm also late to the party on Just Cause 2. I played it for this year's 4 in February. And that was my first experience with Just Cause, and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a game. I'm thinking MMO, any MMOs or anything like that that I was late to the party on. I mean, I guess you could say I was kind of late to the party on Terraria. Yeah, that would be a good one. That had been out like a year before I played it Mm -hmm. and just got immediately hooked. I put 100 hours in a week. Yeah. That would be another one for me. I don't know. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, and thanks for using the uh, submission form, Antonius. Yeah, I want to start. <laughs> I want to start doing that. At, uh, you know, having feedback, I'll go to that eventually. Yeah, just it's easy. Uh, and even if if you're listening to the podcast and you've never gotten in touch with us, the best way to do it is to go to thumbstickathletes.com/contact. Yeah. And not only is you can, can you use the form submission like Antonius just did but there's links to all our social media our voicemail if you want to leave our voicemail inbox if you want to leave us a voicemail it's all right there mm-hmm. makes it super easy and don't be afraid to use the the form submission we don't get any spam through it nope not often anyway i think we have but we we used to get some spam but i don't we haven't gotten any spam in in probably a couple of years yeah square I, square space has been really good about that i just re-upped our domain for 2 years too all right, so at least for two more years, we'll have something mm-hmm. coming up on our four-year anniversary. Yeah, yeah it's early August. Is yeah. it the eighth? I don't remember what, exactly what day it was. I think it was the eighth. was was launch day. Yeah, we'll have to go back and look. Interesting. Go ahead, Corey. <laughs> uh, Idaho Jake says, Hey guys, think I figured out why I can't stop playing Skyrim even though there are tons of games I should be playing. I have it modded so well that it looks and feels next-gen. The graphics almost look or do look better than some of the PS4 games, and I have added tons of new armor and quests that just keep me thinking I need to play more. Also, I went and got a 32-gig flash drive for my TV, and I definitely noticed a difference so now my skyrim is even more beautiful than ever i did try trove and it actually is cool but i just wish that the controller wasn't so sensitive i have the mouse sense all the way down but the right joystick is still way too much so it forces you to use a keyboard and mouse and to use that i have to sit at the edge of my gaming chair and that hurts my back now that you guys did your game of the year so far what did you think will be your game of the year that hasn't come out yet or what games do you think will be your top five for this year uh, Jake also hasn't answered the question of the week, but I'll save that till when we get there. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, J- Skyrim. Oh, Skyrim. I, that's one of those games that you could just sink massive amounts of time into. And like he said, with all the mods and stuff, like really there's endless content for that game. Yeah. You're never going to play all the mods, you know. I mean, obviously some are better than others, but you're yeah. never going to go through all that content. Even You're probably never going to go through even all the good content, you know? And people are releasing full, fully fledged adventures that are like lore friendly and seamless with the yeah. experience of the game. Like you said, yeah. it's, you could never run out of content really. Yeah. Um, and it does feel, I mean, that's, I had a hard time putting down Skyrim, but there's just, if, if we weren't doing this podcast, I'd probably play a lot more Skyrim. Oh yeah. You know, having a fully yeah. modded Skyrim Def- is great. 
I mean, one of the the only I would say the only downside of this podcast is we we constantly feel like we have to be playing new games. Uh, occasionally, we will get stuck in a rut playing something. You know, I had my Guild Wars two time. I'm still playing Mario Kart, but but we we usually try to move on to the to to newer games to talk about. But uh, yeah, definitely that would be one of the ones that would constantly be on my hard drive and you know play a couple times a week. Glad to hear you tried tro- Trove. Yeah, joining the fun. Yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, it's cool, but I wish that the controller wasn't so sensitive. I didn't play with a con. Can you play with a controller? I didn't know. I, sure. I guess you can. Yeah. I guess that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, to kick back. Yeah. Here, yeah. Yep. Uh, what do you think will be your game of the year that hasn't come out yet? We talked about this a little bit. Uh, was it the at the end of last week's episode? Could have been. Um, because <clears throat> I, I I think I had mentioned that I don't think anything that's coming out uh, will top The Witcher three for me. But but Tito brought up Fallout four. That could very well be uh, on my list. Uh, as the number one number one game game of the year whatever what have you yeah i got my eye on fallout 4 mario maker xcom 2 xcom 2 yeah on there yeah um there's a couple yeah and, and you never know like my game of the year last year was divinity right and i you know that's not a game i was anticipating at all right so yeah, you never know. But, but I would I would say for me, XCOM two and and Fallout four are definite possibilities of of topping The Witcher three for me for for game of the year at the end of the year. Absolutely. I also want to try to make a bigger deal out of our individual picks for at least game of the year for this upcoming thumbies. Usually by the end of the episode, we're all kind of drunk and and tired. So I'm hoping we we can we should start it earlier. Start it earlier. Yeah. Well, now it. we're gonna have our rewards dinner and everything. Yeah. So I'll probably be even more drunk. I don't know. We'll see. Are you going to hand out Dundies, Dan? Dundies? Oh, man. I could hand out Dundies. <laughs> Paper plate awards? Yeah. Dundies. I could do that. Participation trophies. Participation trophies. <laughs> uh, Go Tito ahead. In L- oh, that's question of the week answer. Tito in LA says, I'll make this short and quick. Hating Windows 10 so far because I can't get the damn update working on my computer, so I'll just stick with Windows 7 for now because I keep running into errors during the update process. Huh. I didn't have, I don't think I had a single, I didn't have a single hiccup. Yeah, I I, I checked on uh, PC Gamers, they had a, a thread for, for people that were upgrading to Windows 10, uh, any issues you had, game incompatibilities, what have you, and, and there was a handful of people that were having issues with it, and uh, it, it's funny because the error like doesn't explain exactly what it is. It says it's like something went wrong. It's a very vague error message, so you don't know exactly what's wrong with it. Mm. But I have heard of people having that problem. Uh, I upgraded to Windows 10. It took me like 20 minutes. Wow. Uh, so it was s- seamless. So uh, that was on my desktop. I'm gonna hopefully do this uh, Skype laptop. This come uh, this coming week, so I'm sure that'll give me loads of trouble. But of course, <laughs> yeah, my desktop pretty seamless. I haven't done my laptop yet. I've got a lot more to worry about on my laptop, though. So yeah, of course that'll be the one that has issues. I we're thinking about doing a Windows 10 episode next week, but that's just maybe at this point tentative. Tentative, yeah. Uh, Tito goes on to say, had a lot of fun playing with Eric and my friends in Rocket League. We went on a nice winning streak for a little bit, then got our ass handed to us. I did score a goal after time expired for the win and save the replay. Scoring awesome goals in this game puts you on such a gaming high. Feels great. Word. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I watched Corey's playthrough. I, 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 Sorry. I should say I wouldn't know. I didn't score that many goals in Rocket League. Yeah. But I'm sure. I'm sure it is a nice feeling. I did have a really nice save yesterday when I was playing, or where I boosted and got it at the last second, and the guy on the other team was like, oh my god, you god. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a god. But it was just fluky, you know? I, yeah. It was more fluke than it was skill. Nice. Just got lucky. Well, as long as it looked like it was skill, that's all that matters. Oh, yeah. beautiful. And I meant to save the replay, but I forgot. Yeah. 
That happens to me too. Uh, I watched Corey's playthrough of Rocket League just to see how long it took him to figure out there was a boost. It was about <laughs> two hours of playing, and even then, it still seemed like Corey wasn't sure he could really boost. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Nice. Yeah, I had still had a great time though without the boost. Yeah. I can't even imagine. You I had, use it all you, the time. You probably had more control over yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I was just flying uh, everywhere, calculating. You know, I was like the I was like Yarmir Yager out there. Yeah. <laughs> picking your spots. Yep. Cherry picking. No, that's not fair. Yarmir Yager, he doesn't cherry pick. He's just slow. <laughs> that's pretty much all I have for now. Hope to play with you all soon. Yeah, we gotta. That's what I, I want. Uh, actually, Ryan and Iowa had uh, a Twitter message along those lines. Wants to set like a day where we all get together and play. The problem is half of us are on PC, half of us are on. Well, most of us are on PS4. Actually, it's just me and Dan that are on PC. Yeah, half of us. There's gonna be there's gonna be an update though. I don't know when it's coming, but they're gonna make it so you can group up with PS4 players and Steam players. Blah, blah. Yeah. I don't know how that's gonna work, but. They are working on that, so once they get that done, and I've got to practice up a little bit. I don't want to embarrass myself too much. I'm mm-hmm. supposed to be like athlete, you know. I can't suck that bad at Rocket League. Yeah, get with it. I know. Uh, but I, think... I, I, I agree I would like to do that, but go ahead, Corey. I think that I feel bad. I think that's it for feedback. Feedback, feedback, yeah. Uh, that That could be. Um, again, when Eric's, Eric's the one that usually gathers all the feedback and when he's not on, we're kind of scrambling to find it all. I meant to do it before we started, but of course I forgot. I mean, that's not going to come as a surprise to anybody. I think about it. I just don't want to do it. (laughs) Yeah, I can see that. Same here. So, uh, (laughs) let us know. Yeah. Let us know. Don't be bashful about it. We feel bad if we miss it. It's not because we want to miss it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Question of the week was uh, not video game related, but we were talking about the $15 per hour wage hike for fast food workers in the state of New York, effective by the end of 2021, 2018 in New York City. So happening sooner in New York City than than elsewhere. Uh, The question was, what fast food restaurant would you like to make $15 per hour at? Idaho Jake says, I'm not really sure I have one. I think I would say... Oh, wait, this is an older question of the week. Corey. Oh, sorry, I read the wrong email. Whoa. Oh, man. Now you screwed it up. Idaho Jake says, I would say Chick-fil-A. Good choice. That place seems like a good place to work, and I wouldn't feel bad if I ate there every day. I think they have, like, Sundays off, right? Yeah, they have they Sundays do. off, and their their chicken's fantastic. Yeah. Really, it's really good. And they're, like, Mormons. I, I, saw, don't, yeah, no. I saw a good meme the other day, like you won't eat at Chick-fil-A because somebody doesn't support something, but then you go and buy all these clothes that are made by, like, slaves, essentially. Children in in other countries. Yeah, just the hypocrisy of people. So I respect your decision to say Chick-fil-A. They make good chicken. Um, I don't eat their chicken because I support or don't support the owner. I eat their chicken because it's good chicken. Yeah. I, uh, that, they have a biscuit, breakfast sandwich that's a piece of fried chicken a biscuit an egg and like ham and cheese and or something it's fantastic it's like the best breakfast sandwich ever i shouldn't say that in my opinion it's the best breakfast sandwich ever but anyway tito in la says i'd rather be unemployed than work at a fast food joint (laughs) no i wouldn't maybe wendy's either way i'd be unhappy (laughs) (laughs) Tito, I spent uh, three or four years in my high school years working at, at Wendy's, and working at fast foods, it's, it's the worst. It's absolutely worst. I think it's a given we'd all be unhappy wherever we work. Yeah, I would be fat, fatter, and unhappy. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I know we had some Twitter answers. Give me a second to look it up. Yeah. Or at least one Twitter answer. We got one from JRP. J on, twi- on Twitter? Yeah. Twitter. I think it was Twitter. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, you're right. Small coffee, coffee shacks in Washington with scantily clad hotties. Pimpin' Java. I'll take $15 per hour to work there. And he included a picture of a scantily clad barista. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. That's that's like a thing in a lot of places. Well, you know what it is? Is the type of people that work at coffee shops like that, like, they're usually 
artists aspire you know, or aspiring models aspiring models actors actresses generally attractive male female whatever um yep. that's just the line of work that they find themselves in so yeah i could see it i would work there i would work shirtless there no one would want to see me shirtless but <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm experienced that's offensive dan what that people wouldn't patron you because you're think you're nobody wants to see you shirtless um i'm chubby <laughs> some people are into that uh, but i'm an experienced barista i make hell of a cappuccino so there's that <laughs> yeah so what would you, would you prefer an attractive female behind the counter or someone who's going to make you one hell of a cappuccino i'd rather have one hell of a cappuccino there you go dan's your man yeah okay um, I don't know. I think we might have missed one or two. I feel really bad. I hate it. I hate there, it. There is a few more. There, there is. I know my wife sent one in. And there's one on Facebook. Corey, oh gosh. Under I don't the, know. I'm scrambling here. Under the, uh, the, the, uh, there's one on Facebook uh, under the episode one from Valerie in Illinois. Oh, Papa Murphy's. Valerie in Illinois says, Papa Murphy's. If you don't have them around you, it is a take and bake pizza place. That way I didn't smell like cooked fried food all day. I'm totally, gonna, yep, go ahead. Totally agree. Um, when I worked at Wendy's, I smelled like raw meat and dirty fry grease. Mm -hmm. And then I worked at Pizza Hut too, um, which is a pizza place. And I smelled like slimy, oily pizza dough. And it's a disgusting smell. And it doesn't come out of your clothes, and it stays in your in your skin, and it's really gross. Which do you prefer? Uh, well, I mean, when I worked at Wendy's, I had I had bloody meat on my clothes, so I preferred Pizza Hut. Uh -huh. You know, at least it was uncooked pizza that was on me, and not bloody meat. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with the whole thing. And I, if I, I'm thinking Chipotle, okay, would be a good place to work because they don't have. Fried. I mean, there there is, but well, I don't know. I I guess I haven't really seen enough of a Chipotle kitchen to know. Right. But something like a In and Out Burger seems like it'd be all right. Okay. Or like a Five Guys kind of place. You're missing one crucial one. Subway. Well, yeah, that'd be good. So you could smell like cold cuts. Yeah. I think the cold cut smell would be all right. No, once it gets on your clothes, though, and gets, like, stale, oh, it's probably gross. But I feel like that washes out better than, like, grease. Okay. I've heard some bad things about Subway's tuna and mayonnaise. I bet. <laughs> I don't know why you go over there and get tuna. It's kind of gross. I know, right? Well. <laughs> Corey, we got two more in the email. I'll read them. Go ahead. Uh, this one's from Bob from the Valley who says, I would want to work at Dairy Queen because everybody is happy around ice cream and I would have a hundred friends and not everyone would hate me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, what am I thinking of? Uh, like, a like a Sonic where you have to bring people out their food on roller skates on roller skates. That probably brings a smile to people's faces too. Yeah, but I'd be miserable doing it. Can you imagine, like, having to roller skate somebody out their food and then tripping and falling? Just all for questioning all your life choices. <laughs> all this for the fifteen an hour. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one's from Val in New York. Says that I would like to work at Chick Fil A for fifteen dollars an hour because they have the best food, and that would mean that there's finally one in New York or that I had finally moved out of New York. After six years in college with a master's degree and nine years of working in my field of elementary education, I'm pretty sure, or I'm sure that some fast food workers will be making more money than I do. Pretty awesome deal that has, that has been worked out here. Please note the sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Second vote for Chick-fil-A. That's two for Chick-fil-A, yeah. Uh, for me, it would probably be, it would be either like a Starbucks because of my barista expertise or dunkin donuts because i freaking love their coffee maybe maybe taco bell yeah because i no. like else food well then you'd be see behind the scenes yeah probably and see how gross everything is yeah i wouldn't like that 
I've been to, I don't know why, but ever since that ruling, I've been going to a few fast food places. I went to, since that, I went to McDonald's once, Taco Bell once, Dunkin' mm-hmm. Donuts once. Mm-hmm. And every time I'm, I go through the drive through I want to, like, congratulate the person giving me my food. Well, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, six years from now. You won't still be here. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They might want to write it out now. What's that? Write out the six years. Oh, man. That'd be miserable. Do you know what your place would be, Corey? Uh, like I said, it would be like a Chipotle or like a, a fresher food kind of place. Like uh, yeah. um, In-N-Out or Five Guys, Burgers and Fries. Uh, Idaho Jake suggests Stone Cold Creamery. Ooh. That would be pretty good because right. you get a workout doing that, too. Yeah, because that ice cream does not come out of that thing easily. And it's hard to screw that up, so it'd be low stress. Yeah. So you get a workout, you get $15 an hour, low stress, and you're serving ice cream. Yeah. That's pretty good. Wow. The best part is it only takes an afternoon of training to learn how to do your job, too. Chopped. Chopped would be good, too. What? Is that like a salad? Yeah, chopped chop salads. That'd be all right. Yeah. Another Not workout good. job, too. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Will? Little Caesars. <laughs> little little Cheezers, huh? It would be terrible. I'd be miserable, but I have a special relationship with that place. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd probably get a Little Caesars pizza at least once a week. It's just... When I work- it doesn't when seem I, like they take care of their employees. I don't know if they do. I'm not slandering anybody here, but... I mean, I look at everybody and they seem miserable. <laughs> As I walk out with my pizza and eat seven slices in one sitting. When I worked at Pizza Hut, I would take home at least a pizza every night for free. <sighs> among <laughs> other things. Health-wise, it's terrible. Oh, my God. Uh, look at the nutritional facts for an entire Little Caesars pizza. Mm. Don't want to think about it. It's like 180 grams of fat. See, I, I have no food service experience. Oh, that's not true. I did work at a coffee shop for two months, washing dishes. And then in college, I worked in the dining hall for a semester. Huh. Food service is the pits. Yep. It really is. But I got to serve the ice cream at the dining hall. That's fine. That was fun. It makes it okay. Just me and my little ice cream shack. <laughs> all right question of the week for next week uh so i i messaged out uh the thumbstick athletes mouse lure edition yeah where i just threw together a bunch of titles for clickbait articles uh-huh. that'll make us money make us the big bucks uh so my question of the week for next week is what's the best video game related clickbait title and what i want to do is We'll take the best one, and I'll write an article about it. Sounds good. I like that. For clickbait, that's, you know? That's video game clickbait article. Yeah. That's the you can think of, right? Yeah. So what's going to get you to click? Not even you. What's going to get your mom to click? Yeah. And your grandma. Yeah, maybe someone who isn't isn't into games don't let me click on the headline don't let me forget this because i want to come up with something good and i know i will forget yeah okay next week's episode uh tentatively is on windows 10 i think if everyone gets it installed and up and running and tests a few games for it we'll uh we'll do an episode on it next week it won't be too in depth but just our experiences uh individual experiences with windows 10 um that's the plan for now anyway uh, obviously, we can't test everything, but as it applies to us and and our our specific gaming situations, we'll we'll give our give our experiences, right? Yeah, totally. Potentially, he played violent video games for two years, and then this happened. That would probably get someone to click on. <laughs> don't don't give me ideas. Just <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. That'll do it for episode 210 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Will. I'm Corey. Thanks for listening, and get out of my basement. Done. Can we just drag it out a little bit longer till Sophie goes to bed? <laughs> <laughs>